I feel so official, sit, you know, sitting here with my little fucking star command. I was about to say, it's like it's like a, a nice since we can't go outside or do anything. It's like a substitute club. You can just like you know have your own little party at your desk and be like, hee <laughs> hee. And wait until you see the size of this room. Once you realize that it's like a little like like walk-in closet, you're gonna be like, yeah, this is like perfect for that. Yeah, throw in some ecstasy and you have the whole experience. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> just thinking about that back here being in this like little room just <laughs> tripping face while I'm playing like Ghostbusters or something I'd be like oh <laughs> that is an extreme image I haven't I haven't picked up cyberpunk yet I've been I've uh... been thinking about it oh that didn't sound good I would not pay sixty dollars for it I like I regret paying sixty dollars for it. I so, know. T- so, so tell me why. <laughs> I ain't nothing but a heartache. Is it ain't nothing but a heartache? I would say it's like it's not it's like two steps from a heartache. Yeah, it's like let's you know what it's not a heartache, but you know those sharp pains you get in your chest for no reason, and they like cripple you for ten minutes, but then you can keep going on your day. Sure. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> It's just like they they just like the execs clearly pushed it out way too soon. They definitely over publicized and over promised. I think that if they hadn't publicized it as much as it, they had, like I wouldn't have as many problems with it, but it's just like it's a way shallower game than they made it out to be, like in right. every sense of the word. Well, uh, there were so many there were so many promises earlier on. It's you know, just like, like I, all these buildings you see, you can walk through all uh-huh. these people that you see, you can talk to like, I don't know. You guys, you guys are. And it's like, not you're true. You're saying a lot. <laughs> no, I know. And it's like... there was no way, there was no way it was ever going to be true. Not without like another five Not with years. what we're running on. Not yeah. with what we're running on. Well, There's, that's, just... that's what I said to my roommate. I was like, I just don't think the technology that we have right now is capable of delivering on the things that they have promised us. I just don't think we have it. At so least what not right are now. you playing it on? Because that is an important question. I am on the base PS4. Disclaimer. But ironically, sure. like the after, so I started playing after they released all, released all like the bug patches and everything. So it hasn't really been very buggy. So right. my, my problems aren't really, like, with the bugs. Because my thing also is that, like, bugs can be fixed. I'm fine with the graphics. I get it. It's a base PS4. It's not going to be as good as it is on, like, a top-end PC or on, like, a PS5 or an Xbox Series X or whatever. Like, I get that. That doesn't bother me. My problem is that, like, the actual gameplay itself is just so shallow. Like, yeah, the city cannot be interacted with. For the most part. Like, there are a few things you can do, but, like, I mean, even when you go to a bar, like, they're just, like, like, they're just vendors. Like, all of the vendors are the same. So, like, you go, like, you can't sit down at a bar and, like, have a drink like you can in, like, I don't know. Like, Grand Theft Auto, you know, the bartender slides you a drink, you progressively Mm -hmm. get more drunk, you pay a stripper, you crash your car into a bridge. Like, you know, that kind (laughs) of thing. Like, you can't do any of that in this game. I mean, like... It's like when you go, for example, to any vendor, even if you're in a bar, in a club, it just opens up a menu with like flat icons and then there's no animation. It's like that for everything. It's like that for all the Ripper docs. It's like that for all vendors. It's like it's just like there's just not as much depth as they said there would be. And like the life paths, for example, it changes the first 15 minutes of the game and then nothing else. Right. And then there's nothing really different. Yeah, exactly. So it's just like, it's not a bad game. I don't think it's a terrible game. I don't think it's a great game. And I definitely don't think it's a $60 game. Especially not with all of the problems it's had. 
when they fix yeah. them. I think they're going to pull a No Man's Sky, to be straight up with you. And I think that in, like, a year from now, we're going to have a really sick fucking game. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, like, for now, it's just not... It's it's fine. It's, it's fine. It is... It is the difference, though, between the studio that did No Man's Sky and Project Red. Like, they they do care. Yes. And, you know, the they, they, they started small and became renowned because of Witcher 3. Right. You know, they... I, I dislike... And, you know, just to talk about it for a little bit, I dislike the argument that... Um, we shouldn't have expected it to work well on the base consoles. Like, yeah, like, I think bitch, that's they've bullshit. been working on this game. <laughs> they've been working on this game for ten fucking years. You're, you're telling me that they couldn't perfect it on the consoles they've had the entire time. Plus, like, have like, you seen? That's not an argument. <laughs> also, like, that's not an argument. Have you seen Red Dead Two? That game is beautiful. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there have right. been plenty of gorgeous there's been games. plenty of there have been plenty of games that do not run into the problems that they are having mm -hmm. on on base consoles mm -hmm. and that and and that should never have been the argument My... I, I even now as a pc owner i'm not the type of person to turn in that type of situation and say well you're not playing it on the best possible way to play it so it's going to look the way it does like no no that's not an argument no. that's not an argument they've and... been working for for minimally they have been working six years minimally on an xbox one ps4 build like, engine yeah exactly right like th minimally six years maximum 10 uh-huh and i mean the, like the, the, the ps5 and the xbox series x just came out mm -hmm. which means that they've they've probably only had a year or two to work with it and yeah. really and really when we break it down what's the fucking difference it's, it's... A, f a faster computer a, a faster ability to load in visual settings and and that's it a bigger processor and a bigger memory drive like they're wow those are your differences between the xbox one and the xbox series x it's just like my my problem with my biggest problem honestly is just the amount of like not it's honestly some of it even goes beyond over promising and it's just straight up lying like well, they, that's what that's what no man's sky did exactly they were like oh well we're gonna have this and then you play the game and it's just not there and you're like whoa mm -hmm. what is going on and they're like oh we may not have actually shown anything on the base consoles and lied so that you would buy the game but it's okay you love us right <laughs> and you're like and, not and really we do for, <laughs> like we do for the most part specifically I, because of because of where they came from and what they did. And, you know, like, No Man's Sky did a did a complete 360. Exactly. I've heard that it's actually a really good game now. And so, like, granted, I haven't picked it up yet, but I also didn't pick it up the first time around. So it is something I've considered testing out just to see, like, you know, how they might have changed. But I also just, I really genuinely believe that what's going to happen is, like, I think that in, you know, they're going to keep, hi, sweetie. They're going to, Sorry. <laughs> they're gonna keep fixing things and i think that probably by the end because like honestly for me things are pretty good right now as far as bugs go i've only had like two crashes i think and i've been playing for about 11 or 12 hours and then yeah. like one game breaking glitch but i was able the good thing about it is that it auto saves so frequently that when it does happen it's not that big of a deal right but um i'm thinking that they're gonna fix all of the major problems by the end of february of next year ish there's gonna be a few more things that they need to do but like the bulk of the terrible stuff will be over by then and then if they want people to trust them again they're gonna probably start dropping like free updates that'll have features that should which have i've already, already heard in the game i've already heard about that i know and i just i'm hoping especially because they said they want to do an online and if that's still true in order to get people to play the online, they're going to have to incentivize us. So I'm thinking they're probably going to give you, like, some kind of hella incentive if you join the online within, like, you know, the first 30 days of its launch or the first week or whatever. And then they're totally. going to continue adding things like barber shops, tattoo parlors, uh, you know, like animated bars, like, you know, things that should have been in <laughs> the ability. Things that they said would be in the game but aren't actually in the game. Apartment customization, like, things that other games already have done like <laughs> a long time ago because like my other thing is like i know for me i don't need the customization to be like insane honestly 
Like, I mean, on, and you know what else? The character creator is not revolutionary at all. There's nothing special about it. It's no. fine. It's not a bad character creator. I was able to make an extra. I <laughs> sorry, my cat. All right, there we go. I'm good. I got it. I'm just gonna like ah, like yell so you're gonna see a big That's thing before. <laughs> sorry, my cat stopped the recording and. <laughs> She did, and then she just purred while I held her in one hand like a sack of, like a football. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's hilarious. She was looking for attention. So so you were saying that the, the character building really, really isn't that that crazy, and you, you've probably tested its limits. Yeah, no, there's nothing special about it at all. It's not a terrible character creator. Like, it's fine. I made a really cute, I made a cute V, you know, I made, I gave her a strong nose, some sun damage, but like, it's just not like, like they made it sound like the character creator would be the be all end all, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then they were like, you can put a dick on anyone. Like, <laughs> yeah. And we, it's like, I mean, is that cool? Sure. But like, it's definitely not like, World you know, changing. It, no, it's not. And it's honestly not like that progressive either. I'm kind of suspect that they may have like, <laughs> thrown that in there to be like look how sexy and progressive we are but then ultimately the pronouns are tied to your voice so it's not like you know it doesn't, it doesn't actually it, it, change yeah anything. it doesn't really it's very do anything. superficial change yeah exactly um, like is it cool yes is it the be all end all of representation in games no <laughs> right which is like how i think the whole thing is though it's like is this cool yeah it's fine it's definitely not game changing and it's not anything we haven't seen before i think that's the right. problem with it at the core is that it isn't that it's bad, it's just that all of the parts add up to a hole that we've already seen multiple yeah. times. And in some cases, we've seen better. Yeah. And I think, you know, like, I, I've been waiting, so I'm I'm admittedly late to the game on many things, and it's because I am... The same. <laughs> I am... Well, you just, you said you're playing Cyberpunk, and it literally came out six days ago. So, like, you, I can't, did you can't say that. <laughs> listen, listen. I... I still have not started Fallout 4, and I've owned it for the last two or three years. Honestly, like I... <laughs> you're not missing much. Don't feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> but for loving that series, I would say that I have taken I have taken way too long to get to it. And I I recently just replayed through all of the first Fable game. Oh, me! I played through uh, Fable 2. I replayed Fable 2 and played Fable 3 for the first time. Because I only had ever played Fable 2, and I just replayed it again, and I was like, damn, I fucking love this game. <laughs> Fable's great. I fucking love Fable. Fable's, Fable's real good. and I, I'm so I, stoked for the new I Fable. I played the first one, and it crashed seven million times on Aww. my Xbox, and I, I could do nothing but laugh, because it, it had the worst <laughs> FPS... Yeah. It took me it took me I think 20 hours to beat. <laughs> and She's... you know, and I got through it and I was like well, it was anniversary edition so I also got that added end bit to the game. Right. And I I finished it and I put it down and I was like I was like this game was a mess to play because I'm playing it two consoles later. Mhm. Mm and I still had fun. She's, you know what? It's we love her. She's old, and but she's like funny, and she's we faithful. just have so many good memories. Like I just, I love her. I don't care if she crashes a little bit, you know. <laughs> like she's, she's allowed to shit the bed every now and again, and I'm not going to be mad about it. <laughs> but the argument with cyberpunk is that everything it's doing has been done already. Yes. And at least those people didn't lie to us. <laughs> yeah, and and they also did it better. Like, they really did do it slightly better. It when just you sucks. say that, which specific <laughs> games are you talking I about? I mean, honestly, I'm literally thinking about Grand Theft Auto V. Like, yeah. it's just so many of the mechanics in Cyberpunk, like, exist in Grand Theft Auto V, and they exist really well. I mean, like, I'm what else is there? I'm, I gotta go back through it. Because I feel like Grand Theft Auto is just the closest comparison that we have because of the kind, like, the genre of game it is. But, the like... Fr the freedom, the sandbox. Exactly. You, you have to acknowledge that. When exactly. I When I compare Cyberpunk to something, I compare it to Deus Ex. Right. And I'm, I'm looking at uh, Mankind Divided... And, and I, but uh, I mean, even with uh, with Deuce, I have not played Deuce X, and honestly, I think I should because I really love a fucking sci-fi cyberpunk bullshit. I love that shit, which is why I was so stoked for this game. But I, right. from what I've heard, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, like Deuce X has an intense depth of like gameplay. 
Like, there are a lot of ways to play the character as far as, like, your implants go. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's it's gameplay related. You know? It's, right. It's, are you the type of person who wants an augment to make your... Uh, to make your feet movement completely silent so you could sneak up behind everyone? Or are you right. the type of person who's going to install boosters so that you'd be able to double jump? You know, right. now now people are going to hear the boosters when you use them to double jump to a higher area, but are you the type of person who tries to get to the new areas to take people out from a distance? Or are you the type of person to get in and get dirty, you know, and, and do things up close? And, right. and, you know, and within that are seven other layers of, of what you can do to customize that character. What I exactly. will say is that the... The sandbox, even talking just a strictly human revolution, the first one that came out on the 360, mm -hmm. um, beautiful fucking graphics, beautiful gameplay. Um, the, the main difference is your sandbox is way smaller and completely mastered. They know mm -hmm. exactly, you know, exactly what you were saying about walking to, into different places and getting different uh, reactions and conversations out of different people. Mm -hmm. De Deus Ex does that. And See and it does it beautifully on an older console. Right. Now, the main, main difference between Cyberpunk and Deus Ex, I think, based off of everything I heard. Now, I haven't played Cyberpunk. I've just seen a lot of it. Right. I mean, um, I haven't played Deus Ex. I've just seen a lot of it. So we're this is great. We can combine into one person. So I, I love <laughs> Deus Ex. I love Square Enix. I love Deus Ex. I love... Uh, I, lo I love... Uh, that first game and what it manages to do. I think Mankind Divided uh, kind of tried doing the same thing on steroids. It was right. like the difference between Shadow of War and Shadow of Mordor. Like, mm -hmm. you have a smaller box that you mastered and then you lose a little bit of that mastery to make the sandbox bigger in the sequel. Right. Now, that being said, the main difference is that Deus Ex is a procedural. Right. You are playing from the perspective of a cop, mm -hmm. a detective, it's very Blade Runner. You, your, your sequences to escalate or de-escalate a, a perp mm -hmm. is, is I think the coolest part about the game. You know, you, the, the first main mission you get is, uh, you break into a warehouse, whether you knocked everyone out and did it safely and nicely and kept everyone alive and saved all the people, or you ran in there and murdered everyone, doesn't matter. Because the last room you get to, your main guy, the terrorist, the head of this organization, is holding a gun to a, to a, to a victim. And, and, mm -hmm. they, and they, they say, if you take even one step towards me, I'm, I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull the trigger. If you make that step, they will pull the trigger and yeah, right. you'll be able to gun down the suspect, but you won't get any of that information. You know, you'll be known as the type of guy who shoots first and asks question later. And it absolutely impacts the universe's perspective on you as a character. Right. I yeah, was see... the type of person who stealthily like knocked everyone out always mm -hmm. tried to do everything the safe way right and then when it came to the hostage negotiation i put a lot of my perks a lot of my my care into how i talk to people uh, right and, and i was able to get him to put the gun down and he pulled a fast one on me and escaped but that mm -hmm. made but that made the world's perspective on me as as completely different and i i end up running into him later in the gameplay and he gives me something you know like right, the, right. the game the ramifications of your actions are felt in right. deus ex and it's think... felt in universe the universe the sandbox reacts to your actions and right. it's not it's not as simple as Grand Theft Auto, you run over a person and the cops show up. It's not that right. simple because you're a cop. If you were to walk out on the street and shoot someone in the head, I don't think anything would happen in Deus Ex. You're a cop. They're going to look at you and they're going to say, oh, he just he just killed someone. And, you know, you might be reprimanded um, by your by your like higher up lieutenant. But at right. the end of the day, the game is going to continue. Yeah, I, I think, think that 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 experience is what cyberpunk is lacking. I completely agree. Because, like, for me, like, I, I played one mission, and the there's so far I have only done one mission. 
where there were a few different ways to complete it and I was able to complete it in the way that I wanted to. But like I know when I play games, like when I played Fallout, I always I go for a charisma build every time. All the time. I love it. I love being able to solve things without fighting because that's not like the main reason I play video games. Like I play for story and for characters. If there's some slicing and dicing, like I'm not going to complain. I don't mind doing it every now and again. But like if I can solve something without a fight, I'm always going to try and do it just because I like being able to like talk people down and like figure out how to like either play both sides or like, you know, I love being able to do all of that. And so far, cyberpunk seems to be more about things happening to you. Yes. Than how you I have heard that as well. You are the in story. the middle of a situation and then people just start shooting at you. Exactly. And I just don't love it. And like the combat is not designed for a multifaceted approach. Because like the hacking has potential to be really, really cool, but it's just not thought out. And like... <laughs> It's, you know, it's just, it sucks because it's like, I can see so much potential and like the atmosphere, the one thing the game gets right is the atmosphere. The atmosphere is spectacular. And, and it, like the and sets when it are looks gorgeous. good, it looks good. Right. Yeah, exactly. The city is beautiful. Like the NPCs when they work are very, like they look great. But then once you get into the actual like gameplay and like the story and the nitty gritty, that's when I feel like it sort of falls apart. Because it's really lacking that depth, like you were saying, of like Go, feeling like you can affect the world state and affect the story and affect you, the people around you. Do you own an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One? I actually own both. Go, go <laughs> pick up Human Revolution, and it don't you don't even have to do the like the game of the year version that comes with all all the extra stuff. Like literally, pick up the base 360 game. It'll it'll cost you no more than ten bucks. I, I bet. And and just give it a go because sure. I think I think when you when you see how the world looks and when you see how it operates, I think you'll get the experience that you're looking for. Specifically, the the empath kind of talking to people experience. Right. I think you'll get that out of Deus Ex a lot more than you'll get it out of out of Cyberpunk. And I also think that you'll be able to see like. Where where Deus Ex goes wrong, it, you look at the machine it's operating on, mm -hmm. and and you look at the capabilities of the time that that game came right, out. Like right. I remember playing that game in two thousand and like seven, and being like, "Wow, this game is beautiful." Like I still would say that even playing it now, and and the fact that I do say that, you know, it makes me it makes me want to like stop recording and go play Human Revolution right now. Like I I think. I think, th I think the studio should have looked at a game like that and said, "How can we turn that experience into a sandbox?" Right. And then, and then take you out of the law system, and then, and then say that, like, you know, introduce the GTA aspect of you are just a person. You mm -hmm. get to decide whether you become kingpin or you become, you know, the savior of this city. You know. Yeah. Exactly. I just, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna hold out. I'm gonna do my first playthrough and see how I feel about the story. Hopefully my mind will be changed, because I'm about, I, I'd say I'm about, like, halfway through the main story at this point, I think, which is really short, but I'm not mad about that, because, like, I think games drag things out too long now. Sure. But, <laughs> but once I... Once I get done, I will, I'll report back, and hopefully when, you know, at this time next year we'll have something a little bit closer to what they promised us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, no, that's another reason why I wait on things. Like I, 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 I honestly, I don't pre, I don't pre-order games anymore. I haven't yeah. in a very long time. I'm very reaction based. You know, I, I make my own opinion for myself. Like I, I don't think like what Avengers got terrible reviews. No one liked the Square Enix Avengers game. Right. I loved it. I had a lot of fun playing it. And I and I am going to continue playing it for when they continue releasing characters for however long they do that. I I made my own judgment with that game and I admit I'm I am the target audience for that game like I I'm right. a nerd and I love superheroes and I think the 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 graphics and the the ability to to play each of those characters individually and and have it feel like you're playing different different people was the coolest thing. So like 
I look at that and I say, this is, this is great. And I see mm-hmm. that the the things that people are complaining about are, are just stupid and they shouldn't have, they shouldn't have expected those types of things out of a game like this. Like it's not, it's not an open world game. So why are right. you asking it to be more like Spider-Man? Like, honestly, why, why are you doing that? Yeah, that I, doesn't make I don't sense. want to play as the Hulk and just run around a city. I don't think that that's not what the people who made this game did. They, they wanted you to go on missions. They wanted you to do like arena fights and, and, and can you last this many rounds with your team? You know, I I don't think people's expectations were in the right place for something mm-hmm. like Avengers. Whereas I think people's expectations for Cyberpunk were exactly where they needed to be. And the fact that people are still disappointed says a lot more than than what people said about like Avengers, which was also like a critically acclaimed stinker. Right. Um, I, I completely disagree though. Like, and then, and that's just my perspective. You know, I, I will tell you right now that I think Deus Ex uh, Human Revolution was one of the best games I was able to play on my 360. And, mm-hmm. and I had also played things like Fable 2, Fable 3, Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 3. Like there were a oh lot of God. things I played on my 360. And I, I will tell you right now, Human Revolution was one of the best games I played on my 360. Right. Yeah. I just like, I, I haven't finished the game, but I have a bad feeling about the ending of Cyberpunk, which makes me wonder <laughs> if I will ever play it again. Because sure. like, and it's, I, I just thought of this because you mentioned Mass Effect, which I, I love. And, <laughs> and they just dropped that teaser trailer for a new I Mass I saw Effect. your, I saw your reaction online I, and I, I kind uh, of, I kind of agree with you a I little am bit. I'm so upset. I just don't, I mean, maybe I would love to be wrong I like there aren't many times when I love being wrong because I like to be right. <laughs> That's fair. <But> I, <laughs> I have a Leo moon and a Sag rising. I just have to be right. <laughs> <laughs> but I like uh, I just I really feel like it's just going to be another fucking cash grab because like the way Mass Effect 3 ended was brutal. It was, you know, like and no matter what you picked, it was brutal. It was. And I, and I didn't care for the synthesis ending because A, they added it later and B, it's stupid. But like, <laughs> I just like, and, but my thing about that trailer is that like in the trailer, the, whatever the canon ending they have is clearly not synthesis. And we can tell because no. Liara's in it. Right. You know what I mean? So like, that just doesn't leave a lot of options and the implications are just not good. And I'm like, you all are going to try and make me pay $60 to torment me again. <laughs> and I it's just gonna take a lot more than an announcement video for me to for me to want to buy that because I, I i didn't play andromeda i didn't i heard it was bad I, so i didn't get it i tried to play it and it's not good like i just it was it's just andromeda was it was a rushed cash grab of a game and they took they had like so much potential with the setting and they just threw it all in the trash they were right. like, we're going to do the same thing, but slightly different. Also, here's one of the worst character creators you've ever seen. Like, right. The, <laughs> thanks. Why, it's almost like they didn't have eyes. They did the yeah. entire game blind. Like, they no really one looked. Did. No one looked at this and said, this looks really bad. <laughs> like, yeah. like I, no, looked at, I, I, I looked at the trailers and I said, this looks really bad. <laughs> exactly. And I was just like, you know what? And I got it way after it came out just to see, you know? And then I was like, this sucks. This is so bad. I what? just, it's, it's just not... Did like Bioware character- did Bioware make that one? I mean, they made it featuring our best friends EA. Oh. So yeah, EA just EA just kills everything you love. So, but <laughs> this was no except exception. Except for Star Wars games. Except for Star yep. Wars games. That's that's they're they're that's doing true. they're doing okay with those. Yeah, I was thinking about picking up the one with the I don't know what his name is. He's some redhead. I don't know. Oh, Fallen uh, but, Order. Fallen yeah, Order. Yeah, that great. one. Fallen Order I thought is about great. trying it. It's it looks good. it it looks a lot better than I thought it would be because like after the whole battlefront fiasco, I was like, mm. no, Fallen Order is a is a singular storyline experience. It's there. There's very little ways they could have fucked it up. Cool. Maybe it'll be worth a shot. I'm I I just really hope that the Mass Effect game is like good and they find a way to make up the ending to three to me because I loved three up until the ending and the ending just fucking like wrecked it for me. I agree. I just hate it when you have a game where all it's like your choices matter, and then in the end, it's like surprise. 
Your they choices don't. don't matter. <laughs> like at all. <laughs> and that was that was my thing that actually made me the the most mad out out of all of it is because yeah. I I played all three of them on the three sixty and I I carried over the the story from each of them. Same. The, so did I. The the my story like I remember saving the one queen in the first game and the Rakdai queen and it came all the way back into the third game. And yeah, decision, and it was awesome. My decision was still there. And then, and then the game ends with kill, kill everyone and the universe. It's like kill everyone or never see your friends again. And either kill everyone or kill the character you've spent three games building a relationship with. Yeah. And it's like, that's not like, I I don't, and there's no way to prevent it. There's no, like, I would love it if, even if they made it really hard to get that ending. You know what I mean? Like, I, like a better ending. I just yeah. but they didn't. So here we are. Because you know, like the way Mass Effect Two ended. You know, there there was a way to get through that last mission and save everyone, and there was a yeah. way to get through that last mission and have all of your friends die. Exactly. Um, uh, why they didn't just do that again for the third game is really confusing. But like on a wider scale, I used to purposely should've... kill Miranda. Hated her. <laughs> She was the worst. Oh, we've we've been talking for a little while about You're video right. games. I think I think we should probably start start doing we what we're here to do. Uh, we absolutely I, should. I I love talking with you about games though because I feel like we're on the same page. Definitely, I feel like, I feel like we agree about the same things. We just have different tastes. Yeah, and that's and that's really all it comes down to. So so when you give me a recommendation, I'm like, okay, yeah, no, I'll check that out. So yeah, same. I'm go- I'm honestly probably gonna check out Dusex because I've been thinking about it for a while and knowing that you like it so much, I'm like, all right, it can't be that bad. I'm, I'm talking shot. the 360 one though. Don't don't go to the Xbox One one until you finish the 360 one because okay. i have i have a feeling that you would like to start with something a little bit more simple and a little bit more streamlined i definitely would um and and even then i think there's an ability to start that game and get immediately overwhelmed by all of your options right and i would i would simply tell you to sit back take a take a deep breath and say like you will get there. Like, okay. You will you will eventually have a build of a character by I think the third to last mission mm-hmm. that you are completely comfortable with based on how you like to play. So I think the, I even remember the mission. I'm not going to say it, but like there came a point where I was playing that game and it just like I check out my augmentation screen and it's built a certain way and I was turning things off and turning other things on and I was like I was like yeah I don't think I'll have to change this for the rest of the game like I think I'm going to play the rest of the game with this build. Mhm. And I was like from that point onward I was just zen. I was just like I was I was zoned into the story. I was trying to keep everyone I could alive, you know, that that I was trying to, you know, I was trying to take down this terrorist organization without, you know, any any negative ram- ramifications. I was trying to be the best cop I could be in right. in the cyber cyber world. <laughs> right. And I think that game was a lot of fun. So, I think um so too. I I am obviously here with Cannibal Siren. We've been talking about video games for a little while. Um, and I think it's I think it's fair because uh, a lot of people have been sharing their opinion on uh, on cyberpunk as of recently. Oh, yes. And um, I'm sure by the time this episode even comes out, opinions will have changed. You know, things things will have escalated in, in one or which directions. Um, if you were to ask me what I'm playing right now. I am playing, uh, shout out to our YouTube, <laughs> shout out to the YouTube, I'm playing Phasmophobia with my friends, and um, on the console, I am replaying on the hardest difficulty, uh, the first Spider-Man game on the PS4. Wow. Going, going for that last achievement before I have the whole game completed, uh, which means playing on New Game Plus at the hardest difficulty there is possible. Right. I love it's that a bitch. for you. <laughs> yeah i'm i mean i'm playing cyberpunk for now i may we'll see how long i last 
I'm, I'm probably also gonna, playing I mean, Wolfenstein I, too. Wolfenstein is great. I like Wolfenstein. I think I'm going to finish Cyberpunk and then I'm going to, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I might go back and play the very first Bloodlines because I'm excited for the second one. Um, but I've never played the first one. So I think I'm going to check that out next because, you know, vampires are sick. <laughs> Absolutely. I know <laughs> I know other people on the show who who would cheer the minute you said that so so def- <laughs> definitely definitely give that a give that a go i was about to say bloodlines one or just vampires are sick <laughs> <laughs> uh both <laughs> <laughs> although i'm not gonna lie if you know you know how do you remember back in like the 2000s when everyone was like pirates versus ninjas yes so i always picked pirate but then, you know, moving on, when I think about vampires, I always think about vampires versus werewolves. And, like, I'm probably going to pick werewolves, but, like, there's just an undeniable sexiness to a vampire. Absolutely. That's, that's, without, you know? that's without a doubt. Exactly. I feel, like, uh, I feel like in all of our episodes, we always have these types of conversations. <laughs> we always got to get back to the monster fucking at some point. I mean, point. it's and my it's primary just... personality trait. <laughs> I don't really know what to tell you. At I the just... at the end of the day, you are the siren, so it is it is in your name. Thank you. And yeah, no, I I'd I... always side with with vampires. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I laugh before I even think about saying this. Oh boy. I don't know if I would be much of a different person without a soul. So I think <laughs> so I think being a vampire is a li- is is appealing. Oh my god. Uh, my base my basic anxiety is existentialism. So if you mm-hmm. were to bite me on the neck, have sex with me and then tell me I'm never going to die, I'd be like cool. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's my thing. Like I don't like not dying until I decide that I'm going to die. Yeah, I'm down for that. I I like that. Because then I can be like, hehe, nobody kills me but me. <laughs> Which is how I operate in real life. But it would be nice to have some actual immortality to back yeah, it up. Yeah, like if you had no <laughs> ramifications behind any of those actions, yeah. that would be cool. <laughs> exactly. Although, I mean, I'm already kind of like, you know, ghost. I'm like really pale and cold all the time. <laughs> so like, I don't know if it would be that much. I've already got dark circles under my eyes. Like, sharper teeth would, I think, make me a little bit hotter. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I, I also think it depends on what kind of vampire you are because there's some real ugly motherfuckers. Oh, absolutely. You know, and and d- depending on even which which universes you're talking about, you know, there there are the vampires who lose control and do nothing but blood feed and they become crazed animals. They're they're the type of vampires who feed on other vampires and they turn almost sick sick mm-hmm. vampires and i'm not talking like they they were really good on the skateboard i'm saying that they <laughs> they literally turn into monsters bigger than bigger yeah. than vampires even exist as you know they're yep. they're like bat forms of vampires that are more mm-hmm. animalistic you know there's than... like the nosferatu looking motherfuckers <laughs> yeah. the creepers yeah yeah that's yeah. what i would probably with my luck that's what would happen to me yeah, they'd be like, you can live forever, but you're going to look like that. And you have two teeth. And you're like, fuck! <laughs> yeah, I, I would be like, ugh, no. <laughs> I look like a rat of a person. No thanks. Yeah. I, I like looking like a, a rat, but at least I have hair. You know, like, I can, <laughs> I can handle that. I don't want to be a bald rat. Oh, it's <laughs> fucking hilarious. Oh, uh, <sighs> yeah, uh, this, this is episode... Uh, is this really let me let me see what episode is this this is episode 195 how crazy is that that's fucking wild oh you and i were talking about the 200 special yes um, we were for, for a little bit and i'm i'm excited i'm excited to have you for that I I have tried to give as little information to the audience as possible, so it's it's fun to bring it up for a couple seconds, uh, Riley smile, and then move on. <laughs> exactly. Listen, I had I had an entire conversation. Okay, so regardless of what you believe about supernatural existence in real life, right? Right. Me and my roommate, who's also my good friend, have had conversations about this before, right? Because we're both very we're both cowardly little p- beings. And Fair. however, it turns out that in real life, when I am confronted with like even the possibility of the supernatural, 
you know, her first instinct is, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, I'm so scared, I'm gonna just, like, you know, even if it's just paralyzed by fear, it's, like, her first instinct is acknowledgement, right? Right. My, I've had moments where I've woken up in the middle of the night because I heard a voice, but there's no one in the room, and my boyfriend <laughs> is asleep. <laughs> and you know what I did? Go back to sleep. I, I went the fuck back to sleep. <laughs> Because guess what? You know what happens in a horror movie when something wakes you up? When you wake up and investigate, that's when it slices your ass. When you go back to sleep, what's it going to do? Kill me? I'm asleep. I don't care. Win-win. I'm going to level with you. I've done the exact same thing. <laughs> like, I'm just saying. Like, I have woken up in the basement of my current house. Like, I live down here. This is where my studio is. It's where my bedroom is. It's where my little living room is. I have woken up swearing I've heard someone say something from the top of the stairs and gone to like check from the bottom of the stairs asking myself do I walk up the stairs to go see what's going on or do I stay down here and mind my own fucking business or go back to sleep and let me tell you it falls back on that B answer more often than not which is minding my own fucking business and going back to sleep Right, exactly. That's the thing. That's what doesn't get you killed in horror movies. When you mind your goddamn business. That's hilarious. That's, I, can't, I can't wait for you to like play this game and not interact with anything and, and try to escape the entire situation. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to do. Every time it's like you see a creepy face in the mirror, I leave. Right. Like, it's just, like, no, I don't, like, I'm not gonna do that. Like, it's like, what do you do when you see a creepy face in the mirror? I cover the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? There's a voice coming oh, from down shit. the hallway. I go the opposite I fucking the direction. direction. <laughs> no, no way. You hear, a, you hear a voice in the woods. It sounds like your mom. No, the fuck it's not my mom. My mother is a 56-year-old woman in North Carolina. She is sitting and enjoying her life, maybe smoking a blunt with my brother. There is no fucking way she's in the woods next to me. I'm going back inside. Like, it's just... It is hilarious that in the last 30 seconds you have said several things that absolutely have the possibility of <laughs> happening while we play the game. I'm just saying, like, it's, I mean, listen, I've seen more horror movies and played more horror games than I have ever wanted to in my life because people in my life love to watch me suffer. So, it's fair. So, it sounds, like, it I'm, sounds entertaining. I'm, it is entertaining. I'm not going to lie. I'm very funny. But, like, I just, <laughs> it just seems logical. They're like, I hear a funny noise. That sounds like my brother. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> just leave. That is my, that's my philosophy. That's hilarious. If you're in a horror movie, just leave. If someone does something weird, leave. <laughs> if you walk into oh. the gas station and there's only a payphone and the guy behind the counter is looking a little weird, leave. Keep fucking walking. Oh Don't my even God. stop. This this conversation is going to play into <laughs> into this 200 more than you know, more than you could possibly know. I I can't I can't wait to see you making <laughs> making the decisions you make surrounded by the people you're going to be surrounded by. Oh, I'll it just tell you sounds what. great. I'll tell you what if that I don't know who it is, but if bro if our Brosif is like I'm going to investigate, I'm literally going to stab him myself. <laughs> Just full on. Like, you know oh, how that was? You said there was someone who will sacrifice himself for other people. I will sacrifice someone for everyone. Right. <laughs> and I think that that is the right thing to do. Now, I'm making all of these assumptions based off of these people <laughs> and how I've played games with them in the past. I don't know if any of you guys are going to go into, like, quote unquote, pro gamer mode and try to, like, win the game. I don't know. I think I think maybe one or two out of the people I named might have the the wherewithal to be like, nah, I'm going to be better than this situation and try to win. Like, I don't know if that's going to happen, but it, it has the possibility to happen. What I know is it's not going to be you. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, that's fine. I'm I very excited. I don't want to win. I just want to live. <laughs> I just want to live. That is live. the same thing in this, in this argument. That is the same thing. Uh, uh, fine. Oh. But but I don't expect you to go into pro gamer mode to try and oh, figure no. it out. Oh, I expect no, no. you to just avoid Leave. everyone and do your best. <laughs> My, I mean, granted, another principle of mine when it comes to horror movies is to stick the fuck together. 
So whoever's working together, I will also be working with them until okay. the moment comes when it's time for one of us to leave, in which case I will leave post haste. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I know I know exactly where you're going to be then. I know exactly who you're going to be talking to, and that's that's fine. Great. So. So I have a lot of expectations for this the two hundred episode now. I, I I know I now know exactly what what your your game is going to turn into. Um, <laughs> Maybe I'll surprise you. Well, you know that that is the funny part about recording right now is whatever we're recording right now, I might find a way to bring into the campaign somehow. Oh, so good God. so depending on what we're reading, which you know getting into it, um, people people need to know. Uh, <laughs> Your last couple episodes, we've been doing like multi-parters. Um, right. You know, we've we did the the change thing. We did the romantic cabin getaway. Um, but something you and I started this podcast with was stories to read alone at night. And stories to read alone at night. I've talked about it a hundred times. Uh, it's just someone who wrote all these stories themselves and they put them on a fun little uh, website. And I think the website is defunct now. I don't think it exists in its natural state anymore. Mm-hmm. But, but I found their new website. Ooh. I found, I found this guy's new website. And so I, I went and I, I grabbed all of his new stories as well, because he really only does like seven or eight stories per website. Right. And we read, and this is, this is leading into our first story we're going to read. I, I went back to all of your episodes and and it mm-hmm. was it was when I was crafting the 200 to decide right. what I wanted to grab from those episodes I went back and I realized something what you and I had read all but one of all the stories to read alone at night together <gasps> we only missed one we only missed one damn I read you... I read one story to read alone at night with one other person on the show so today the first thing we're going to read is a rehash of a story that I read in episode seven. All right. With someone else. I think it was episode seven, at least. Uh, it could have been seven or t- I think 12. I think I'm, I'm bad with the earlier episodes. It was four years ago. I fucking forget. Um, <laughs> I originally read this story with Sir Booberry. And I read it from the perspective of the little girl, and he read the, from the perspective of the mother. Uh, okay. We're gonna we're gonna swap it. You're gonna read the perspective of the little girl. I'm gonna read the perspective of the mother. You and got it. um and this is gonna be the first story we read tonight, which is uh, Maggie. Uh, and if if this is a reminder to anyone who has been listening to us for that long, uh, congratulations, you win nothing. Uh, good <laughs> day, win... sir. You win our acknowledgement in a very yeah. broad and impersonal sense. Right here, right now. Good, good job. You listened. You listened to so much of you the podcast. You wasted your life listening when, to two assholes. <laughs> back when, back when the quality was garbage. Yes. And and I was a lot more stoned than I am right now. I'm still stoned, but not as much. <laughs> I had less cats, so, I think. Not much. Not much has actually changed in hindsight. Go away. <sighs> Sorry, I'm like throwing my cat like a sack of potatoes because she that's, keeps wanting to pause my recording. <laughs> the only threat to this program <laughs> is Cannibal Sirens cats. Yo, <laughs> her name is Padme, and it turns out that Padme is the biggest hater. Of the podcast. <laughs> After all these years, the real enemy was in my own home. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. You ready to read a creepy kid story? Who doesn't that was, love those? That was great. So Maggie, again, I, I remember reading this one with um, with Sir Booberry. And this is so the cool. only one out of the original stories that we missed. So I did I did want to read this one first. And it... it it goes by line. So you're going to start with the first line. I'm always going to be the line responding to you. Perfect. So it's a conversation we're having and you're just every other line. Okay. Fuck. Yeah. So again, uh, this story is called Maggie and we are reading, uh, this is going to be a stories to read alone at night episode. And this is the first one out of the three that we're reading today. Um, this is Maggie. Mommy. Yes, dear. Will you play with me? Oh, I'd love to, sweetie, but 
Mommy has to work. I got that OnlyFans. I need to keep making material. <laughs> you know what? Good for her. Hustle, Mom. Do it. You always <laughs> say that. I know, sweetie. I know. I'd rather go outside and play with you, but grown-ups have to work. But I don't have anyone to play with. Oh, you'll make friends soon enough once school starts. Now, why don't you run along and I'll take you to get ice cream later. I get two scoops! <laughs> two scoops it is, <laughs> but only if you're good and you let mommy work. Mommy? Mommy? Mommy! Shh! Maggie! You can see I'm on the phone? No, I'm, I'm sorry, it's my daughter. Can you hold on for one second, please? Thank you. Mommy, I'm bored. Mommy is working right now, honey. I'm bored. Play with me. Not now, honey. I told you mommy's working. Don't yell at me. <laughs> I'm not yelling. <laughs> I'm sorry, sweetheart. Listen, when I was your age, I used to have tea parties with my stuffed animals. I'd pretend that I was in a, a tower of a beautiful castle. There was a, a moat with swans and everything. And we'd all sit in a circle and enjoy our tea and each guest got to choose their own sandwich. is anything they wanted. I remember that Mr. Flappy, my pet seal, he always got tuna and oysters on banana bread. That's gross, Mommy. Maybe to you and me, but seals love tuna and oyster sandwiches, especially on banana bread. Do you think that Mr. Banky and Princess Sasha would like to have tea and sandwich? I don't know. Well, why don't you go find out? Okay, Mommy. Maggie, are are you are you up there? Are are you having another tea party? Yes, Mommy. I thought I heard giggling. What's so funny? Princess Sasha spilled her tea all over Clyde's fur, and Olive said that he was all wet. <laughs> that is funny. Uh, but but uh, which which one is Olive? She's sitting right here, Mommy. Right where? Here. Right there? Yes, Mommy. She makes me laugh. I told her we could play on the porch swing later. Well, it is nice to meet you, Olive. You know, when I was your age, I had a friend like Olive. Uh, her, frame, her, her, her name was Samantha, and we had a lot of fun together. Uh, now, come on down. It's lunch soon. Okay, Mommy. Maggie, I told you to dry off after your bath. I do, Mommy. Then why are there wet footprints running down the hall? I don't know, Mommy. Maggie, we talked about lying. I'm not lying, Mommy. And why did you put your dirty clothes back on? I didn't. Why are you lying? I have eyes, you know. And you were wearing that outfit before you took your bath. But I didn't take my bath yet, Mommy. Maggie, I do not have time for your lies. It was Olive. You're telling me Olive spilled water all over the floor? She leaks sometimes. Maggie, I'm giving you... <gasps> One last chance to take responsibility for your actions and clean this water up. We don't lie in this house. But it wasn't me. I'm not lying. Go to bed. But mom... I said go to bed. I do not talk to liars. <laughs> Damn, mom. How old is this <laughs> fucking kid supposed to be? That's like... I, I, don't I, <laughs> I think like six or seven or something. I mean, like, listen, I don't have any kids, so maybe it's not my place to criticize anyone's <laughs> parenting, but shit, okay. <laughs> you also made a funny noise there, like you were gonna throw up. What was that for? She leaks sometimes? No thanks. <laughs> if my kid said that to me, I would be like, well, we're going to exterminate Olive straight away. <laughs> I was Maggie, hoping that's, you'd say that. That's very nice, Maggie. Olive is blocked. <laughs> <laughs> me dialing up the Ghostbusters. like. <laughs> I I had a conversation with a friend of mine who, who has kids, and he said that his his youngest has gotten to the stage where she has an imaginary friend and, oh. and he and he voices <laughs> he voices his uncomfortability with it <laughs> pretty I often. Hate it. I just <laughs> that's, that's the thing.
thing. Like, I don't know if I can ever have kids because if I have one and then she wakes me up and she's just standing at the end of the hallway looking like a fucking demon, I'm going to punch my own kid. <laughs> like. <laughs> that is the conversation I have with him, yes. I'm going to die. Alternatively, I just slam the door in her face, which is equally damaging. It's so. <laughs> just as bad, you know? Mommy? What is it, Maggie? Olive said she's sorry for making a mess on the floor. She says she can't help it sometimes. She hopes you're not still mad. What did I say about telling the truth in this house? But I am telling the truth. That's it. Go back to your room and don't come out until you're ready to be honest. Mommy, no. I said go. Maggie, your bath is ready. Go get in and I'll come check on you in a minute. No, don't give me that face. Go get in the bath now, Maggie. Mommy, the water's freezing. I'm coming to check on you. You better be in that tub. But it's freezing, Mom. No, it's not. I just ran it and it was nice and warm. Now, if you're not in there by the time I come in, you're really going to get it. Maggie, why are you shivering? It's freezing, Mom. It's not freezing. I just ran it. I... Oh my god, it's ice cold. I told you. Oh, come here. Let's get you out of there. I'm I'm sorry. I I ran it and it was nice and hot. You didn't believe me. I'm I'm so sorry, honey. Let's Let's get you under the covers and we'll read a story together. Will you read a happy story? Of course I will. And and your friend Olive can can come and listen too. She's not here, Mommy. She's not. Where did she go? She's hiding from her mommy. Oh, why is that? Did she do something wrong? She said she didn't do anything wrong. She said her mommy gets real mad sometimes and that she has to hide. Well, mommies do get angry sometimes. She said that you're a better mommy and that she'd like for you to be her mommy too. Well, you can tell Olive that I will be her mommy too and she can visit me whenever she likes. Okay, Mommy, I'll tell her. Maggie, you barely touched your dinner. Are you feeling all right? Yes, Mommy. Then why don't you eat some more? I'm not hungry. But spaghetti is your favorite. I made it just for you. I don't want to. How about three more bites? Will you do it for me? I don't want to, Mom. Why not? I don't want to stretch. <laughs> you mean grow? Honey, growing is normal. You're getting a little taller every day. Not that, Mommy. Then what's wrong? Are you afraid you'll get fat? Did, did the kids at school tell you that? No. Honey, you're, you're growing. You need to eat to be healthy and strong. But I don't want to stretch. You won't stretch, I promise. You're beautiful and you need to eat if you want to stay that way. But you can't eat too much or stay in the bath too long or your skin will stretch and then it won't work. That's not true, honey. Besides, you're, you're too young to worry about that. Why, your skin and bones as it is, you could stand and gain a few pounds. Now, eat a few more bites for me and then we'll watch some TV. Okay, Mommy. Mommy? Mommy, what's wrong? What? Oh, yeah. Um, Mommy just, uh, she just thought that she saw something. I guess I, I guess I scared myself. Everything's fine, Maggie. But nothing's there. No, no, just my reflection in the in the mirror. I guess I've been working too hard. You're scared of the mirror? <laughs> no, honey. I was, my my mind was just playing tricks on me. It, it happens sometimes when you're tired. What's in the mirror? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. See for yourself. It's just us, Mommy. You're funny. You even spilled your water. <laughs> I know. I know, Maggie. I'll, I'll clean it up. Now, go back to bed. Maggie? Yes, Mommy? What are you doing? Playing princesses. Oh, is your friend Olive playing, too? No, she's hiding. From her Mommy? No, from you. She said that you don't like her because you think she's ugly. That's not true, sweetie. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like we learned. You, you never judge a book by its cover. Remember when we talked about that? Yeah. 
So no matter what someone looks like on the outside, it's what's on the inside that matters. Yes, mommy, but all I've said that she wanted you to be her mommy too, but you won't because you think she's ugly. Maggie, that's not true. I'll be Olive's mommy too, just like I said I would. Now, what does your friend look like? I don't know. Is she a little girl like you? Yes. See, I would never turn my back on a little girl, no matter what she did. Does she have nice blonde hair like you? No. Her hair is dark and curly. Man, fuck y'all. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is this too much. <laughs> Does she have blue eyes like you? Uh, no. Her eyes are whiter. They're not brown or blue <clears throat> or green? No, mommy. Whiter. Is there anything else about her? Anything different? Yes. Mommy, uh, her skin is loose. That's why she leaks. Honey, why don't you come sleep in my room tonight? What the fuck? Okay, Mommy. <laughs> I like that you're getting creeped out by it, because when I first read this, I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> I'm like, excuse me? Her skin <laughs> what? <laughs> Her skin is what? <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna fucking put- That's some fucking Willy Wonka taffy pulling machine bullshit. You keep that shit away from me. I said stop it. You're hurting me. I'm telling my mom. Mom, Olive's pinching me. Maggie, why are you yelling? Are you crying? I pinched myself, mommy. It hurt for a second, but it doesn't hurt anymore. I think we need to get out of this house. You've got yourself all worked up. Why don't we, why don't we go get some ice cream? Maggie, your, your forehead is wet. Were you running around? It's okay, Mommy. I won't leak anymore. Leaking? Why, you're down right. Can we go for ice cream now, Mommy? <laughs> gross. And that's the end of the story. <laughs> that's a gross story, man. You keep your leaking kids away from me. <laughs> <laughs> you you learn another two or three reasons why you don't want to have children by reading I was that about story. To say, <laughs> I was about to say, even regular kids leak. That's not special. This You're ghost kid is nothing. You're getting closer and closer to getting your tubes tied with every Listen, story you dude. read like that. <laughs> Every day I think about going to town with some scissors. <laughs> Next time I hear some kid say something about leaking, I'm just having at it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I I like that story. I think it 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 plays on the periphery of your imagination because it's just a little conversation. There's no there's no context to anything. Um, but if you, you know, this being my, like, seventh time, like, reading that story, you know, essentially, um, I, I love the pickup of, like, at some point the mom saw the kid, like, like, she saw this dead little girl somewhere, and it freaked her the fuck out, and then things just start to get worse until mm -hmm. eventually the kid just like full on possesses the daughter, you know, uh, so something happens near the end. Um, right. I think, I think Olive realizes that she could like take over the daughter if she wanted to. Right. And then she's like, ha ha, got him. <sighs> and then she, you know, what's funny. Oh, I the leaking. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, like, uh, no, <laughs> Time to take your kid to the exorcist. <laughs> I also just think, like, I don't know. I I think, <laughs> I think for me, the scariest part is actually when, like, she's like, Mom, I didn't lie. And she's like, yes, you fucking did. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I remember being a little kid and, like, all of my nightmares, because I've had nightmares for a really long time. I just, Same. like, it, they, they just keep coming, you know? <laughs> and I think like and I remember being a kid and like most of my nightmares had an element of an adult not believing me oh that was like like the you're biggest... the you're the little uh you're the the little boy who cried wolf 
Exactly. Like, you know, I would be like, yo, this man's trying to kill me. And my mom in my dream would be like, "Uh -uh." (laughs) uh-uh. You're full of it. She'd be like, no, have a hot dog. And I like there's an actual (laughs) man with a hook just like, you know, flailing around two feet away or something. Have a hot dog. She's like, no, (laughs) that couldn't be it. (laughs) That's not it. Nothing spooky going on here. Let's make sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I, um, my nightmares as a kid were always me isolated. So when I'd wake right. up, I would crave attention and I would go to whoever was closest. Sometimes right. my brother, sometimes my sister, sometimes my parents. And the only person I think who ever wanted to listen to what I had to say has only ever been my mother. So I just know that, I know that as a kid, I just had nightmares of uh, freakish spider monsters. And and the only person who was like, they're not going to get you, was my mom. <laughs> and my dad would just be like, I don't see any fucking spiders. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you know, like, that's just the type of response I would get. Right. But in my, in my dreams, as the nightmares are happening, I think I've always been alone. That's that's yeah. always been the the isolation has always amped the fear factor. I definitely used to be like it was always like I feel like I was usually with my siblings, like one of them. It was mm-hmm. never really it was never all three of us. It was always me and one of my younger siblings. And then the dream would usually like it would be either something's happening or it would be me trying to like protect them from something and then I always failed (laughs) which is a nightmare (laughs) in itself yeah yeah it was like some of the shit like it's it's wild some of the dreams that I had when I was a kid were so vivid that like you know at 25 I still remember that oh absolutely and it's like (laughs) that's not good oh yeah that brings back some brings back some bad memories definitely yes (laughs) <laughs> lots of them speaking of bad memories i wanted the first story so so that was something i had read already on the show that was nothing new right. for me it was um, new for me but it was new for you and it was equally as creepy and it belongs with with all his other stories to read it known alone at night uh, exactly. because it's because it's just as it's just as ominous <laughs> so um i want to get to what i would consider this guy's this guy's mascot and the second story that i want to read is uh in the document i sent you can you get to page 58 yes and i want to get your first reaction when you see the title of the story all right here we go 30 40 47 52 where am i 55 57 Oh, Mr. Stringy, get the fuck out of here. I remember Mr. Stringy. Get out of here. So it looks like it looks like he he had a little bit of fun with his uh with his first go at this character. Do you remember do you remember the Mr. Stringy story we read? I don't even know in what episode. I can't even I can't, I can't even remember. shout it out perfect, you know, perfectly, but I can't remember when we read it, but I remember that I fucking hated him. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's what I remember. <clears throat> so I will give the best catch up Mr. Stringy episode one uh, that I can. In the first Mr. Stringy story, which I believe is just called Mr. Stringy, so go back and listen to all Cannibal Sirens episodes. Hint, hint, yeah, wink, duh. Wink. Uh, Who doesn't but... want to listen to my voice more? <laughs> <laughs> so Mr. Stringy um, is a little doll that a, a deceased aunt leaves to her, uh, you know, like, uh, niece. And this niece gets a, a note to come and pick up uh, something from the aunt's estate, when when she passes and when they go to visit they realize that the house is completely empty and the aunt has been storing a lot of stuff in a trailer outside the house mm-hmm. and they go to inspect the trailer and the trailer is just full of dolls Ugh, i hated that and one doll in particular is like wrapped up and it's and it's to be given to the main character who i'd like to think is emily but i don't know because this the the i i 
I see the name on the second paragraph, but I like to think that the perspective of the story is the boyfriend, which is right. an interesting perspective to have because it's not quite the protagonist. It's not, it's not quite the first person who has to deal with all the bullshit. It's the person who's just near the bullshit, which, which is always yes. interesting. Um, so the boyfriend, um, brings, you know, the, they, they get the doll and then weird stuff They're They're supposed to stay up there for an extra couple night or two, but they refuse to sleep in the trailer. So they camp outside. And I remember they find, they find aunt Cicely's dog who has been, who ran away from home, but, but comes back at, when when she finds people there and the dog just does not want to be near this doll at all which is nope. getting more more ominousness and then at some point the trailer gets set on fire mm-hmm. and you think you think mr stringy is is uh burnt but they find him the next morning and then they choose to like toss mr stringy i believe and then he shows up somewhere else so near the end of the story i believe the narrator, the boyfriend, becomes completely aware that Mr. Stringy is uh, not of this plane and has a, a very malicious intent. Because I think the last time that he sees Mr. Stringy is in another kid's hand in a grocery. Um, and it closes out the episode. Like, Which is it closes weird. out the story. Like, he remembers seeing Mr. Stringy being held by a random kid in a store, and Mr. Stringy physically smiles at him, and it, and it ends the story. Which so is nasty. Mm-mm. I don't even know what to imagine when it comes to, to Mr. Stringy, because the idea of it being made out of fabric almost makes it less terrifying, because I think, mm-hmm. like, I think of, like, when I think of dolls that terrify me, I go to, like, the Annabelle section of my mind where I'm, like, you know, ventriloquist dummies, those dummies with, like, the weird porcelain or, or plastic, like, shells. Like, if you're talking just a random little fabric doll guy, like, you're gonna have to go really hard to make him look scary because I think inherently they just look stupid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's tough exactly. it's tough to even it's tough to even categorize Mr. Stringy or how you even yeah, wanna yeah. how you even also wanna his, imagine him. And I mean who the fuck names a doll Mr. Stringy? Mr. Like, Stringy. What's wrong with you? <laughs> like what what kind of what in the psychological damage like I ugh. Unbelievable. This is see, this is the fuck shit I'm talking about. The second they came in and that trailer was full of dolls, bye. By Sell, God. Burn burn the whole fucking thing. I, I agree with you full heartedly in that situation. Like, <laughs> fucking also mr stringy if someone tried to give me a doll and they were like this is mr stringy i would be like this is mr garbage disposal and that's where he would go <laughs> like no this is mr <laughs> fire in the fireplace he's, he's real hungry this is mr burn to ashes like thanks <laughs> yeah. how do you want to read this bullshit <laughs> um do, do you want to start yeah why not and i would say let's just cut it in half Sure. Based so, on the first line alone, I think I'm going to have a lot to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Mr. Stringy Comes Home. Again, stories to read alone at night, the new website. I think if you were to give Mr. Stringy Comes Home a Google, you would find exactly where I'm getting these stories from. I always like to give credit to the sources of where I get the stories, um, mm-hmm. because this guy writes all of his own material and puts it up on his own website. So shout out, shout out to you doing your thing. I love your stories. <laughs> Seriously, thanks, dude. You've provided us endless hours of Endless hours of entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mr. Stringy comes home. Stories no. to read alone at night. No, thanks. <laughs> no, Mr. Stringy can stay the fuck Mr. away. Mr. Stringy actually. goes on a vacation and Mr. never Stringy. comes back. <laughs> Mr. Stringy comes straight to hell where he belongs. <laughs> Emily was pregnant. Oof. <laughs> She shared the news over breakfast. She had broken the yolk of a runny egg and began to cry as the tendrils ran into her hash browns. That is the nastiest way to describe an egg I've ever heard. (laughs) I can't, were the only words she had managed to get out before turning green and making a mad dash to the bathroom. She had been adamant about not wanting children. She said it wasn't a good time since we weren't on our feet yet career-wise. It would be irresponsible, she would say. Never mind the fact that a lack of money didn't seem to be stopping any of our friends. They were more than content to let nature run its course, but I knew there was something else at play. Something to do with her Aunt Sicily and what had unfolded years earlier at that burned-out trailer. 
There is a very simple solution to this problem. <laughs> a 500 to 800 dollar solution depending on where you're at. Right. I'm just saying. It's always an option. I hoped that the inevitability uh, see previous comment of our new arrival would awaken her maternal wow I hate this guy like I hate him <laughs> <laughs> sorry y'all I just oh this is like a pet peeve of mine I'm feeling rage at this moment and now I'm actually hoping for Mr. Shriggy to come home so that he can kill this guy <laughs> I had hoped that the inevitability of our new arrival would awaken her maternal instincts but she was apathetic if not downright morbid about the whole affair <laughs> At the ultrasound, she just shrugged when the doctor told us we'd be having a boy. Even when they showed us the little man illuminated and swimming on the monitor, the sound of his heartbeat only seemed to reconfirm her notions that there was something alien inside her. Feeling him move like that, it just makes my skin crawl, she said. She would get up in the middle of the night and sit at the kitchen table. Wrapped in her robe, she would stare out the window and cry. What asshole makes his wife have a baby again, like this? Like what? It's only it's only when all these bad things start to happen do I do I tend to agree with you about him not being understanding. Like like here's here's my perspective. If I were dating someone for a long time and I loved them very much and they knew I wanted to have kids, I of course would be heartbroken to hear that they did not want to have kids with me after being together for so long. Right. But but if she were saying that she felt gross, that it felt like there was an alien inside of her, and she did nothing but stare out the window and cry, then I would start to understand where she's coming from. I'm just saying, and like, in my opinion, like, there are certain things in relationships that are deal breakers. <laughs> and Having like, a baby and you... is one of them. Having a baby is a deal breaker. It is. Religion is a deal breaker. It is. Politics is a deal breaker. Yeah, like, it should those be. Things, <laughs> it should be. Those things are deal breakers. And that's something, like, people are always like, oh, you shouldn't discuss that on the first date. Shut the fuck up. Yes, you fucking should. You should you know immediately should. out the gate whether or not you people are going to be wasting your time or not. Exactly. Like, I don't want to put 10 years of my life into someone to have him suddenly be like, actually, if I don't have 17 children tomorrow, I'm going to kill myself. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you deserve to know that. As a woman, exactly. with, it, with it being your body, you deserve to know that. Exactly. And on top of that, I think as a dude, you also deserve to know that. Like, if you, if she doesn't want to have kids, you should know right off the bat. Oh, absolutely. Like, you know, if you want kids and she doesn't, you should know that so that you can figure out another thing to do. Yeah, adoption, surrogacy, there, there are other things. Exactly. You know, it's, it's not... Or, you know, there are lots of options. That's the other thing. He's like, it's inevitable. I'm like, it's literally not. It's literally not, though. <laughs> it's literally not, though. Like, you can just and not. And just because she's there not are... ready now does not mean that she won't be ready later. It means that something exactly. happened. Something happened and she's going through something right now. If it's not a good exactly. time, it's not a good fucking time. Forcing no. yourself to have a child in a not good time is definitely not going to bring any sort it's... of success into that <laughs> no. outcome. It's also just not fair to the kid. Like, they didn't ask to be born. Oh, my God. And you're going to fucking <laughs> resent them their whole lives because you decided to have a kid before you were ready? That's a dick move. That's a dick move. When I told her that my parents wanted to help finish the nursery, she replied flatly with, my parents are dead. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I like her. My <laughs> She's spicy. My <laughs> She's killing me. My temper flared, but I retreated as usual. That night, I confronted her at the kitchen table. Her eyes were moist and her nose was running. Can I read for the guy? Yes, because I hate him. <laughs> I know you're unhappy, <laughs> but we're going to be parents now, and we can't go on like this. It's, it's not fair. Not to me, or you, or our little man. He's coming whether you like it or not, and he deserves better than this. He hasn't done anything wrong, you know? I know, she replied. I, I need you here. I said. I know. She wiped the tears from her eyes. I'm sorry, I'm here. I'm here. I'll do better, I promise. <laughs> It's not fair. I, I, I listen, dude. I'm gonna headbutt this man. <laughs> I want to find this man and I want to headbutt him and then put him in a dumpster and sit on the dumpster. <laughs> I'm tough to move. <laughs> I stammered. 
I was wound up for a fight and didn't quite know how to react now that it was clear we weren't going to have one. Good. Then I'll see you in the morning. Try to get some sleep. I love you. Triumph. I'm going to kill this guy. <laughs> <laughs> if Mr. Stringy doesn't get to him first, it's going to be me. <laughs> Mr. Hangy. Mr. Mr. Gunny. <laughs> Mr. Knifey. Mr. Cannibal Sirene. <laughs> <laughs> The next morning, we discussed preparations for our new arrival. We would clear out the den to make a nursery. I would paint it yellow. Wasn't the inside of Cicely's trailer yellow, or am I just making that up? It could have been. I think I'm making that up. I don't know. We would prepare a bag for the hospital and install the car seat in one of those mirrors so we can see him from the rearview mirror while we drive because he was going to be just that cute. A baby monitor, a good one with video so we can watch him while he sleeps. We would choose it. Oh, I know where this is going. We would choose an outfit for him to our home, something comfortable and warm, but smart. There was a lot to do, but I was determined to make sure that I would do everything short of birthing the baby myself if it meant that Emily would come around. That is just such a bad way to go about. It's these. very <laughs> bad way. I, so, so I, I want to say I, I love his enthusiasm because as a guy who's not enthusiastic about children at all, I kind of, en- <laughs> I envy him wanting to have a child right but i so don't want to have children that i'm kind of scared by this type of behavior so i do so i do agree with you but also at the same time that's just not healthy dude like like you are ignoring your wife going through this the wrong fucking way it's also like his complete steamrolling of her when it's like her body just really sits wrong with me. Yeah. It sits the way that a fucking rancid clown chowder would sit in my stomach. Like, <laughs> for nine months. <laughs> for nine months. <laughs> Things progressed smoothly for the next week or so. There were times when Emily's spirit would begin to fade, generally when my parents were called or she'd get tired, but I would do my best to divert her attention. It worked for the most part. My parents sent the check they'd promised, and we set out shopping for all the new furniture and clothes we would need to make our little man feel at home. The only thing we were missing was a baby swing. Our friends with children all swore up and down that it was a must-have, so I set out to the local consignment shop in search of something gently used. As luck would have it, I spotted a nice one in the window as I parked. I entered the store and went to ask the clerk about the price, only to be interrupted by a peculiar barking. We want, we want. It was coming from a boy of about eight who dashed to the counter with his worn-out mother in tow. We want, we want. He waved his arms frantically and pointed to something on the shelf behind his desk. We want, we want. Oh, ham. The clerk said, turning his attention to a ragged doll sitting loosely on the shelf behind him. You, you have that? I blurted out incredulously. It's a classic example of mid-century Oregon string and craft, the clerk said. Rare and quite valuable. (laughs) I was certain he had made up the term just then. We want, we want, the boy barked. His mom tried to quiet him, but this only agitated him further. We want, we want! (laughs) How much is it? She finally relented. Oh, it's in extremely rare and very good condition, the clerk yammered. I couldn't let it go for less than 75. The mother shrugged. I'm sorry, sweetie, but mommy doesn't have enough money. The boy crumpled to the floor in a fever pitch of wee wants that rang coarsely throughout his coughing and tears. Ma'am, the clerk said, he can't be in here like that. He's scaring the customers. <laughs> She glared back at him with a look that caused him to cross his arms and take a step back. She finally relented and began to drag her son out of the store when I piped up. I've got $75. The voice sounded alien, but it was mine. And I did have $75. 75 exactly. It was the last of the money my parents had sent us and it was meant for the swing. The woman stopped while her son thrashed about wildly in her arms. I put the money on the counter. Here, now, give me the doll. The clerk counted out the money and began to write out a receipt. Just give me the doll. I said. The clerk obliged and handed him over. I cautiously took hold of the thing, half expecting it to come alive and sink its fangs into my hand. Only it didn't have any fangs, just those puffy, hand-sewn lips and button eyes and mismatched strands of yarn sprouting from his scalp. 
It was Mr. Stringy. There was no denying it. As I turned, the boy straightened up expectantly and looked me in the eyes. You want? He said, reaching out for the doll. <laughs> Sir, that's the nicest thing anyone has ever done for Joshua, she said. I realized the mistake. I'm sorry. I began trying to think of an easy way out of this. Part of me thought to just hand the doll over and give the lady a much needed reprieve. Sorry, but this is for my collection. I've been looking for just such a piece. I'm a historian. Uh, local history, old history, old history, Ar artisanal dolls couldn't part with it. You're a real asshole, you know that? <laughs> she said as the boy collapsed anew into a one-man symphony of shrieks and flailing limbs. <laughs> <laughs> Lady, you have no idea. <laughs> I scur- True. Based, <laughs> based not on Mr. Stringy, but on the content of the story alone. <laughs> I scurried out the door, doing my best to sidestep the feral child. Outside, I took a deep breath and examined Mr. Stringy. He was an affront to good taste, that's for sure, but there didn't appear to be anything outright menacing about him. No more than any other homemade doll. I went to put him in the car, but the sight of the car seat put a pit in my stomach. I didn't want him to have anything to do with our child. So I wrapped him in a shopping bag and tossed him in the trunk. Dude, then why outside did you buy him? <laughs> I was about to say, why the hell did you buy it? Why didn't you just give it to the kid? It would have gouged his eyes out. <laughs> Once inside the car, I hesitated. My mind raced back to what the sheriff had told us. Something had got to her eyes, he said. Disquieted by that thought, I went back to the trunk and wrapped the bag tightly in duct tape. I took the long way home to buy myself some time. I had to think of an excuse to explain the missing money and the game plan for disposing of the doll. I could explain the money. That was easy. She might not even think to ask, for that matter. But what was to be done with Mr. Stringy? Was he truly a killer? <laughs> that seemed highly unlikely. I chalked the previous events up to stress. I was projecting my fears and insecurities. That's what a professional would say. Nothing more. No fangs, no murdering, no curse. Just a reminder of Emily's tragic past. It was a reminder to me that I needed to be more sensitive. You fucking think? <laughs> She had been through a lot. She had lost her parents early and carried the burden of watching over Aunt Cicely. She deserved to put those things to rest. She deserved to be happy, and I had an obligation to ensure her happiness. I had to make sure she never saw this wretched doll again. Determined to put an end to this thing once and for all, I pulled into the driveway with the intention of grabbing some poultry shears and a butcher knife from the kitchen. It was simple, really. I would cut the doll to shreds and dump what remained in the garbage. It was evening already and quite cool, and once inside the house, my spirits were lifted. There was singing coming from the nursery. It oh, was Emily. No. <laughs> she was home early, and she was singing? It was a lullaby. It's finally coming together, she said as I entered the nursery. You were right about painting the walls yellow. It makes the room feel so cheery, even on a gloomy day like this. I couldn't help but smile. She really was coming around. Can you give me a hand hanging the pictures? They always come out crooked when I do it. I agreed and promptly forgot about my greasy errand. We worked late into the night, and even though I was exhausted, the night proved restless. When I did manage to doze off, I would dream about our trip out to Aunt Cicely's, complete with the fire and the screaming. When morning finally did come, we were woken by a knock on the door. I sluggishly answered to find our neighbor. I didn't want to disturb you last night with your wife's condition. <laughs> Sorry. And all. <laughs> Sounds like she has cancer. <laughs> no, but being pregnant is absolutely a condition. <laughs> it's a condition, all right. <laughs> no, the condition about it is that it's conditional. <laughs> but I saw I had to take Sammy out for a walk and I noticed your trunk was open. Oh, no. I heard, yeah, you fucked up, dude. You should have messed him up last night. But you got distracted by fucking domestic bliss. Unbelievable. <laughs> I heard some rustling, but I didn't see anyone. We must have scared him off. Nothing looked too out of place, so I closed it and notified the police. They said they'd keep an eye out, but they didn't do anything with property crimes. Probably just those tweakers again. My stomach sank. I went and examined the car. Nothing appeared to be out of place, but when I opened the trunk, it was empty, save for some shreds of duct tape and the remnants of the shopping bag I put Mr. Stringy in the day before. I tried to calm myself. 
down before going back into the house, but when Emily saw me, her eyes widened and she asked what was wrong. Nothing. Uh, just someone broke into our car last night. Oh my god, did they take anything? Did they break any windows? No, noth- nothing's, nothing's broken. It's just that the, uh, the $75, the, the swing money, I, I left it in the car and now it's gone. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I looked down and noticed my hands were shaking. That was interesting. It's okay, she said. We'll, we'll get a swing. We'll get a new one. Not something secondhand. Our little man will love it. It's okay, really. It's nothing worth getting upset over. I nodded, oblivious to what she was saying. <laughs> When I calmed down, I checked the car again, just to make sure he was really gone. Then I checked the yard and walked the perimeter of the house. Nothing else looked out of place. Could have been tweakers. They were notorious for petty thefts, and they would take anything that looked like it could be of value. Even an Oregon string and craft doll. For all I knew, it could be sitting in a pawn shop by now, or lying discarded by the side of the road. I tried my best to push the events from my mind. If he had been stolen, then there was nothing more to be done about it. It was someone else's problem now. Important thing. He could have been someone else's problem if you had just given him to that damn ass kid. Or if you had just left him in the store. (laughs) What was he going to do? The important thing was that Emily didn't find out. She didn't need this kind of stress. Couldn't be good for the baby, not to mention our marriage. You, sir, are what's not good for your marriage. Oh, no. (laughs) By evening, everything seemed to return to a state of normalcy. The due date was approaching fast, and we had spent the rest of the afternoon running through our checklist. The hospital bag was packed, the nursery was ready, and I even double-checked the car seat to make sure nothing had been tampered with. Everything was accounted for. Exhausted, we turned in for the night. Around early morning, I was woken by faint static. I listened carefully, thinking I might have left the TV on, only to realize the sound was much nearer than that. Then the blue light of the baby monitor came to life and the volume increased to a deafening roar of white noise. I fumbled for the monitor, trying to turn it off, when the static hopped and the light began to flash. Emily! Oh, Emily! A voice said over the monitor. It was a woman's voice, and oddly familiar. Emily, it's that Mr. Stringy again. He's being naughty. In a panic, I tried my hardest to find the off switch to the damn thing, but it was all thumbs. But was <laughs> but was all thumbs. It was too late. A wicked laughter filled the room for a split second, followed by an abrupt silence. The blue light stopped flashing. I got up to inspect the house, hoping Emily had somehow slept through the cacophony, but found her sitting up next to me. What was that? she asked. I think the monitor must have caught some interference, maybe a CB from a passing truck. I answered, trying not to sound too alarmed. Honey, she replied, but before she could say another word. Bam, bam, bam. It was coming from the nursery. I ran from the bedroom and crashed into the nursery, hoping to catch whoever be in there. But couldn't see anything in the dark. Emily followed on my heels, turning on the light. Oh my god, she screamed. A small gold disc had been nailed to the wall above the crib. I moved closer for a better look. It had the name Ralphie engraved on it. That was Aunt Cicely's dog, the one we found out in her trailer. The one who didn't survive the night. I didn't remember Emily taking it. He's come for the baby! Emily shrieked, and then she let out a low, guttural moan. I turned to see her doubled over. Her pajama bottoms were soaked. Oh my god, she said. Let's go. Now. I think my water broke. We have to go. Now. I said, leading her by the elbow through the house and out to the car. She was sobbing. It was just a short drive to the hospital, but it felt like an eternity. I don't know how he found us, she finally said. I'm sorry. I replied as we pulled into the hospital. I'll I'll fix fix it. Sorry. (laughs) It's okay. I'll fix it. I'm going to find it and destroy it with with fire. Whatever it takes. It's not your fault. Besides, Emily's voice trailed off. I glanced over at Emily. She was wide-eyed and frozen with fear. I followed her gaze up to the rearview mirror. 
there, reflected in the child seat mirror, was Mr. Strangy, his dumb stare meeting mine in the early morning light. I slammed on the brakes. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. <laughs> Get out. Get out. Now. <laughs> Honestly, Emily, Mr. Stringy might just be trying to do you a favor. <laughs> uh, you're onto something. <laughs> we ran as fast as Emily's legs could take her. Before we knew it, we were in a birthing room with a nurse. Emily was struggling with the contractions. When they came, she'd squeeze my hand so hard I was certain she'd break a bone. When they finally passed, she'd ease off and try to catch her breath, but then she'd cry. She was trying to tell me about Mr. Stringy, but couldn't get the words out. I tried to console her. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of him. I'll, I'll cut him up and I'll burn him. But she just shook her head. No, she said. My dad said the same thing. They were going to visit Aunt Cicely, and he was going to get rid of that damn thing once and for all. I don't know what happened, but I know he did something to upset Sisley. They were driving home from their visit when the accident happened. I always thought it was because it was what he said about the doll. I always knew it would come after me. Emily's hand tightened around mine and her face contorted with pain. The nurse said the birth went, birth went smoothly, except for the part where I almost fainted. The next day, Emily got some much needed rest and we took turns holding the little man. Emily frowned when she said, when I said he looked like her. I was hoping he would take after you, she said. I responded that it was hard to tell since he was still so squished from the delivery. <laughs> but still, she frowned. I always thought I'd be the last, she said mournfully. But maybe this curse would die with me. It's gonna be alright. Besides, he hardly looks cursed to me. I know. It's just this feeling I can't shake. We were interrupted by a knock at the door. Congratulations to the new family, a woman said as she entered the room pushing a small cart of stuffed animals. I'm with the local Optimist Club, just here for the little welcome to the world gift for your new arrival. She was all smiles as she studied the various stuffed animals on her cart. Let's see here, I always say there's the perfect match in this card for each and every perfect little baby. Oh no, isn't this sweet? She said as she lifted a ragged doll from her collection. I always say nothing tops the love and dedication that goes into these homemade dolls. Only, this one looks familiar. I swear I've seen it before. Yes, in the pediatrics wing last year, there was this boy. Her voice trailed off as she looked ponderously at Mr. Stringy. Then she chipped up. Of course, these all sort of look the same, she said, forcing a smile. Emily burst into tears as I took Mr. Stringy from the well-wisher. <laughs> when she turned to leave, I quietly stuffed him into my backpack and double-knotted the cinch tie. Whatever you do, don't say that everything is going to be alright, she blurted. I won't. But what are we supposed to do now? I don't know, she said wistfully. Just don't threaten him. I don't want him to hurt the baby. Between Mr. Stringy and the birth, we were both exhausted. I tried my best to process what Emily was getting at. We couldn't just set him free and destroying him was too risky because we might not succeed. Finally, I waited for Emily to fall asleep and slipped out of the room with a backpack. On my way home, I stopped by the hardware store and picked up a small safe and some length of chain. Oh, come on. Mr. Stringy doesn't give a fuck about a safe. <laughs> or your chains. He doesn't care. Mr. Stringy obviously has the power of God, so, like, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Y'all are fucked. <laughs> Maybe she could have broken... Uh, you know what? Maybe she could have broken the curse with an abortion. <laughs> this is the I true wasn't power. gonna say it. <laughs> this is the true power of Planned Parenthood. <laughs> Breaking curses. Breaking since... family curses since 1964. <laughs> What would Mr. Stringy have done? She would have done his job for him. Like, <laughs> theoretically... Mr. Stringy would have done the abortion. Like, he would have climbed... Oh, in, he no! would have climbed into her vagina and, like, cut no! the cord and everything. Oh, no. <laughs> I regret following this train of thought. This is what I get for not thinking before I speak. 
He has a high approval rating, and, and everyone always talks. <laughs> everyone always talks about how kind he is and how 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 quick he is to remove. Uh, you know. Uh, I mean, I don't know, man. Mister Stringy doesn't seem the type to go for like anesthetics. <laughs> no, he's all natural. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The safe was on the small side, but it seemed heavy enough. Lugging it down to the basement, of course you're gonna fucking put it in the basement. Why would you hell? keep it in the house? Why would you put it in the house? Why wouldn't you throw it in a river? <laughs> right. I don't. <laughs> just. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> back to Mr. Stringy and friends. I removed Mr. Stringy from the backpack for one last look. He was as wretched and lifeless as ever. Yep. But when I placed him in the safe, I swear his expression changed. His puffy lips seemed to curl at the edges, forming a wry and wicked smirk. Startled, I slammed the door, wrapped the safe in chains, securing it tightly with a series of locks. Satisfied he wouldn't be making any great escapes, I turned to leave and that's when I heard it. A muffled sobbing emanating from inside the safe. It sounded so much like a child, my first instinct was to free him. I wondered if that's why Aunt Cicely couldn't keep him locked up in his trunk. I would have to keep the combination from Emily just to make sure. Before returning to the hospital, I set about tidying up the house, hoping to remove any signs of the previous night's events. In the nursery, Ralphie's name tag was still hanging from the wall. I didn't have time to patch the wall, so I substituted a small oil painting in its place. It was a landscape of a small lake near Mount Hood that Emily had found some years earlier. The scening was, I cannot pronounce this word, forgive me, bucolic <laughs> and not anything like her normal taste in art. You got it. I gazed at the painting for a moment, trying to figure out why it had caught her eye, but I couldn't make heads or tails of it. It made me wonder what else she had been keeping from me. We weren't home for more than a couple of days when it happened... It was near sunrise when I woke to find Emily's side of the bed empty. Concerned something was wrong with our little Georgie, a name we had chosen after my great-grandfather, I got up to find him sleeping soundly in the cradle we had moved into our bedroom. I poked my head into the living room only to find it empty. I called out her name, but then no answer came. I began to worry. Instinctively, I opened the door to the basement where I was greeted by the soft sound of singing. It was the same lullaby she had been singing the night that I found her decorating the nursery. I quietly descended the stairs and spied her sitting on the floor in front of the safe. Her fingers tenderly caressed the combination lock as she sang, unaware of my presence. Unsure of what to do and not a little creeped out by the scene, <laughs> I retreated back up the stairs to check on Georgie, who was still swaddled tightly and sleeping soundly. I briefly considered disturbing him from his slumber in hopes the sound of his cries would lure Emily up from the basement, but I didn't want to risk a provocation. Lord only knows what was going through her mind. Instead, I just settled back into the bed, my mind racing through possible explanations of what I had just witnessed. Maybe the whole ordeal left her missing her family, of which Mr. Stringy was a morbid but undeniable part, or maybe she was suffering from a bout of postpartum depression. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah, she, yeah. she definitely is. <laughs> she also had prepartum depression. <laughs> but you didn't give a shit about that. <laughs> when she finally came back into the bedroom, I feigned sleep thinking she may explain her actions when she was ready. Only she never did. Each night when Georgie was settled and she thought I was sleeping, she'd quietly get up from bed and make her way down to the basement. Oh, no. And each night I'd follow her, careful not to make a sound. She'd sit in front of the safe, idly playing with the combination lock, or tracing the lengths of the chain with her fingers. There, in the diminished light of her phone, she'd sing her lullabies and whisper stories, the same ones we had been reading to Georgie. Sometimes she'd giggle, and other times I swear it sounded like she was bargaining with the captive Jape. I don't know what that means. It's, I'm clearly not okay. advanced enough. <laughs> I'm not advanced enough for the story. Then, in the early morning, around the time Georgie would wake to nurse, she'd slip back into bed and lay quietly until he began to fuss. The least realistic part of the story is that they have a newborn who sleeps through the night. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't explain why Emily was so attracted to the doll, perhaps a mix of hormones and savory dash of Stockholm Syndrome, but it was clear that my plan of holding him captive in the basement was a resolute failure. 
She was wearing herself ragged, staying up all night, and I was afraid her nightly serenades would escalate to a full-blown jailbreak. Something that would have to be avoided at all costs. Why don't you talk to her? <laughs> Literally, this whole story is communication. Why it's crucial. <laughs> For real. The next night when she got up from bed, I made sure Georgie was fast asleep and followed her down. I didn't try to muffle my footsteps and she must have been alerted to my presence. Because I found her standing wide-eyed in the middle of the basement. I couldn't sleep, she said, so I thought I'd dig around and see if I couldn't find that old photo album we were talking about. I know what you're doing down here. You've been here every night since we brought the baby home. I was too tired to play coy. What? She said incredulously. You've been singing to him. Em, has he been talking to you? You need to tell me the truth. She lowered her head and mumbled to the floor. What's that? Has he been talking to you? It's so cold down here, she said, wiping a tear from her cheek. He's told you that he's cold. It's a doll, Emily. A horrible, ragged doll. Don't yell at me. <laughs> I wasn't yelling. Maybe I had been yelling. Just a little. Because soon more tears followed. Look, I'm sorry. I'm upset. It's true. But I don't know how else I'm supposed to be acting. I tried to embrace her, but she pushed me away and looked to the safe. Your son's upstairs, and you're down here playing mommy to that monstrosity. Unhinged might have been a better word for how I was feeling. Fine. You want him so bad you can have him. I had secured the lock chain so tightly around the safe that I had a hard time getting the key to the padlocks. The combination lock didn't go any smoother. By the time the lock clicked and the latch moved, we had both calmed down enough to speak in coherent sentences. Are you sure that this is what you want? I don't know. He's just so lonely. I cracked the door to the safe and produced the mangy occupant, careful to hold him by the nape of the neck. Emily's face brightened at the sight of him and she held out her arms, tenderly reaching for him the way that she did in the hospital when she saw Georgie for the first time. I thought of what she said in the hospital about hoping the curse would die with her and recoiled. I'm sorry, but we can't do this to Georgie. Emily followed close on my heels. You can't do this. He belongs to me. He needs me. Your son needs you. I made my way to the backyard and lit the grill. I turned the gas to high and threw the doll in the grate and promptly <laughs> shut the lid. Oh, dummy. <laughs> the tears returned to her eyes and I stood defensively with one hand securely on the lid and my other arm outstretched, forcing her to keep her distance. Orange and blue flames spewed from the girl's chimney, emitting a sound that under the right circumstances could be mistaken for a high-pitched scream. After the flames died, we stood silently like mourners by a pyre. I had been holding the girl shut so tightly that my hand began to clamp, despite the pain I was reluctant to loosen my grip. You think I'm crazy, don't you? I don't think you're crazy. It was just so lonely, I could feel it, you know? I didn't know. It's gonna be okay. Was all I could offer, but my arm was throbbing and I didn't want this moment to last any longer than it had to. Let's just do this. Emily nodded. Do you think that's it, then? Is he really gone? The flames have died. I can't imagine there's much more left. I turned off the gas and slowly opened the lid. There were bits and pieces of charred fabric left on the grill. I poked at them apprehensively with a pair of cooking tongs just to make sure there was nothing left, but discovered some solid bits mixed in with the remains. Bits that were too hard to be plush or fabric. There's something here. I said, still unsure of what I was looking at in the early morning light. Emily fetched a serving tray and carefully, I transferred the remains piece by piece with the tongs. We brought the tray inside to study under the light and as I poked through the ash, small ivory bits began to reveal themselves. My god, Emily whispered, please tell me these are animal teeth. I wanted to tell her that, but there was no mistaking what we were looking at. They must have been sewn into the doll. Didn't you tell me that Cicely had a younger sister? 
Rosemary. She died when she was very young. That was the reason they sent Cicely away, but she always maintained it was Mr. Stringy's fault. Ow. Sorry, my cat just clawed my leg trying to get my attention. <laughs> We stood silently over the remains, each searching for an explanation, something that might smooth over and cast light on the postmortem spread out so haphazardly on our kitchen table. I wasn't sure if we were looking at a murder scene or perhaps something more innocent, if not equally macabre. In the end, we opted to inter the remains in a small cedar box and buried them in a shady spot beneath the maple in the backyard. We planted a rosemary bush to mark the location. I had spotted Emily out there sometimes early in the morning when she thought Georgie and I were asleep. She would tend to the plant and quietly sing her lullabies, and sometimes when she was in a particular mood, she'd complain that it was cold and lonely out there, and I'd be reminded that while curses may take different forms, they only ever truly die with us. Dun dun. Interesting. Stringy, Stringy was a little bit more restrained than I thought he was going to be. I was about to say, Stringy, like, he brought the big guns out too soon. (laughs) (laughs) I would say, I would say that Stringy, Stringy was playing the long con, and I don't think it worked. I was about to say, I don't think (laughs) Stringy was expecting that. It's like, well, I'm out of the safe, finally, it was so cold, and then, oh, oh, shit. Oh, shit. It's about to get (laughs) real hot. (laughs) He went too hard, he should have just been nice. (laughs) <laughs> uh, is that is that the uh is that the overall feeling from the story or is that just the you know, feeling regarding to mr stringy because how do you feel about the story i mean i hate that dude i mean the moral <laughs> of the story for me is that you should divorce people like that <laughs> Like, I mean, and it sucks because I feel like the way it was written, it was like, haha, he was right all along. But no, like, I, which I don't necessarily feel like it is at all. I'm like torn because on one hand, like, is Mr. Stringy dead? Do they not have to deal with him anymore? Because that sounds like a win. That is a win. Right. So like, you know, I, I don't know. It's hard because like in that case, he was right. What? I'm sorry. My cat is chewing on the knob of my dresser. <laughs> what are you doing? Having a good time. What the fuck? Hold on, I'm going to try and take a picture of this. <laughs> Go for it. What the fuck? Of course he's not doing it anymore. Oh, he knows I'm looking. That was so fucking weird. Like, I'm talking whole mouth. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> wah, wah, wah. That was so fucking weird. I can't handle this. That's okay, hilarious. anyways. What's wrong with you? That's the big guy, too. What's wrong with you? <laughs> He's so stupid, man. Stop One time I dropped a silica gel packet on the floor and he immediately ate it. Oh no. It's okay. I like I got it away from him before he swallowed anything, but yeah, he he just eats things. Like he'll chew on shoes like a dog. <laughs> I guess he oh. likes the way it feels. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> a little freak. All right, anyways, back to Mr. Stringy. Speaking of freaks. Yeah. Sorry, that was just so weird. I was like, I'm no, that's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, he. I'm like, I'm torn because, like, on one hand, I kind of like the angle that it's like, well, fuck this doll then. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely get rid of him. Yeah. I was about to say, like, I kind of, I do like that. Like, yeah, all right, this doll's tormenting us, so we are gonna light that shit on fire. I also feel Ta-da! like the end of the story <laughs> also implicates Aunt Sicily. Yeah, it does. It does implicate like she, Aunt Sicily. She, she didn't want to. I'm gonna she, read over that again. Actually, she didn't like, want. So. She didn't want to lose her sister, so she more or less imbued Mister Stringy with what was left of her. Mm-hmm. I don't think it but implicates then... her in in her sister's murder. It just says that her sister died really young. I feel like, I feel like when you when you put, you know, it's it's voodoo. A little right. bit when you when you imbue uh, a piece of of someone who's dead into an item, you know. Right, I think like I'm reading back on it and it says that uh, you know Rosemary died when she was young and that was the reason they sent Sicily away. But yeah. she had always maintained it was Mister Stringy's fault. So to me, that implication is that either Sicily killed her sister and then blamed it on this doll, or the doll killed her sister. That's a good point. 
So it's like I'm not sure. The doll I don't killed know which the sister and held on to the teeth as a trophy. Yeah, that's. I mean, I could be. That's it an interpretation. It, it's, that's what it's, I'm thinking. It's never quite said, and and I don't want to just believe because the end of the story tells me to that Aunt Cicely is suddenly evil. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think that. I like from what I remember from the first story. I don't think that's what was happening at all. No, I really think that Mister no. Stringy and if Cicely and was honestly, just alone with an evil doll, and how long can you yeah. be alone with an evil doll before it's just like, nah, I want you. Yeah, exactly. It also sounds like Mr. Stringy, like, like Aunt Cicely took care of Mr. Stringy because she didn't have a choice not to. And yeah. it seems like Emily was going to go the same way. And like, you know, That's it would be like this weird conditional partnership where he's like, yeah, I won't kill your baby, but like, I might. Because oh. actually, you know what? If Rosemary was a baby, maybe he's just a baby killer. That's a good point. You know, and then like, so Emily was going to take care of him and then either he was going to drive her to kill her baby or he was just going to do it. So yeah, nothing good was going to happen from Stringy staying alive. So I am glad exactly. the, story, the story very much so cements Stringy's death. So that's, that's fine. Right. I don't know. I, and I, I definitely liked the first one more because it presented us with a, a I think a much scarier situation. Yeah, But I at agree. the same time childbirth is also terrifying so yeah so for me also too. like as somebody who had I, I don't know if i still have it but like i had a fear of pregnancy for a really long time that's fair and i definitely still have some real weird feelings about it that are not good <laughs> so but like for me like the pregnancy trope in like horror games like horror stories like you know scary stuff is so fucking overdone that like when i see it i'm automatically less interested so i think that like part of the like i like that we got more about mr stringy and i kind of like that we are allowed to kind of draw our own conclusions about what was gonna happen with emily if they hadn't intervened sure and i do like a story where i like a story where we get to just murder the thing i am a right. huge fan of just murdering it like why wouldn't i try like yeah <laughs> burn it with fire is quite literally the first thing i say whenever i'm i'm met with you know like someone who's in a situation where they're dealing with something unnatural it's like well you know you know what else is like inhuman fire so like let's see how mm -hmm. it reacts to that <laughs> that's what i'm thinking though it's like all right my first <laughs> what's the opposite of organic <laughs> exactly. well something that destroys everything fire <laughs> yeah perfect that's my thing. Like, okay, we're in a bad, we're in a scary horror situation. First instinct, bail. If I can't bail, destroy. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's like, and and apparently they they tried bailing with Mister Stringy and it didn't work. So he did the no, next Mr. logical Stringy thing. Mister Stringy is a follower. He's not. You can't just bail on Mister Stringy. That was something that the first story tries to make very clear. Exactly. So he did the right thing by destroying it, and I like that it's like the right thing to do, and that Mister Stringy was just like playing them. You know what I mean? He was like, yeah. oh, you can't it's kill effect, me. Its effect on Emily is the only thing that kind of left me a little confused because she definitely right. she definitely didn't seem like she gave a shit last story. And that just seemed like something that they came up with to make the baby feel like threatened. Right, exactly. And I also feel I like know. the way they paced it, like they're like he, Mr. Stringy didn't have a chance really to threaten no. the baby. <laughs> like he... <No. laughs> He got murked too quickly. Like, not that it's bad, though. I mean, like, granted, I kind of, like, I agree, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I don't care for this man, whatever his... I feel like we got his name last time, but I don't remember what it was. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't care for him as a person. I think that if me and him talked, we would not enjoy one another's company. I would definitely talk shit about him later. I would absolutely shit all over him at a party. Like, 100%. <laughs> However, I have to say, his monster approach... Spot on. 12 out of 10. Would recommend. <laughs> Although he could have just, like, given it to the kid, but I don't know what would have happened there. I don't know if it would have, like, distracted Mr. Stringy because now he has a new family to torture or if it meant that he just would have shit on someone and then immediately showed up at their house. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. There aren't, there aren't many ways that that story could have gone. We've read so many like, yeah, you're like right. haunted little dolls and like the the trope is already played yeah. out with Annabelle and Chucky you <laughs> right. know it's like what really other ways could it have gone and it's like at least it didn't rehash any any shit you know that 
I don't, that that we've seen before, at least, you know? Right. Yeah. No, I, that's, I actually, like, I know that, like, having happy endings, quote unquote, for horror things is, like, you know, not popular. But, like, you know, I, I don't know. I kind of like it when somebody does something logical and it works. You know what I mean? Like, there's no bullshit spiritual reason that Mr. Stringy is, like, unkillable. Beyond psychological warfare, I mean. Right. Which I like. I like that you're, I like that he was just like, nope, fuck this, we're lighting it on fire. And well, then he did, and it was like. Yeah, I mean, when it came to threatening his baby and threatening his wife, I think he finally just, like, lost it. And yeah. and he was starting to lose faith in his wife, so that's what made him, like, pull the trigger. Is like, it's he, true. He was trying to play a different game on Emily than he was with the main character, so it's, you know, uh, when, when he sees what's going to happen and his inevitable replacement of the baby, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, that puts the baby in danger, and he, he kind of had to put a kibosh on that shit. Um, yeah, exactly. It definitely ran a lot quicker than I thought it was going to go. I think I think when I when I saw the page count, I was like, okay. Like I remember the first I remember the first one being a little bit longer, but there were definitely some like solid act movement in the first right. one. This one was all over the place. <laughs> yeah, the pa- that's the only complaint I have besides the fact that I hate the main character. I think like the pacing was just a little like weird. It was I don't very think it was... weird. Yeah, because it was like like I said, Mr. Stringy pulled out all the stops like right away. Very important. <laughs> You know, he was there, like there could have been some some cat and mouse gameplay going on very earlier on when he mm-hmm. when he disappeared. Yeah, like, exactly. I would have much rather him just shown up in places he he wasn't supposed to be over the course of the narrative, like as they're trying to raise a child, and then they just suddenly look outside at the swing set one day, and Mister Stringy's just like sitting there waiting. It's like I would I would have much rather something like ominous. You yeah, know? exactly. Because I mean, Mr. Stringy's pretty creepy. So it's very creepy. <laughs> like, he's he's unpredictably creepy. creepy. Yeah, and that's that's. I also think that my only problem with Mr. Stringy as like a villain is that he's like he confuses me. I can't like. <laughs> it's because his like, motives aren't clear at all. <laughs> exactly. Like his motivation is just not like. Like is he is he? I mean, I'm getting a baby murderer vibe, but then like, what's the whole point with Emily? Right. Like, I don't, I I don't get it. Like, does he need a caretaker? And since Sicily's dead, like, mm-hmm. I don't, but, is and like, why does, does he, he need a caretaker? Does he replace the baby? Is that why he kills That's them what and, I, that's where I thought the they spot. were going at first. But then why is his name Mr. Stringy and not like Baby Benjamin or something, you know? Like, I don't know. He's just. It's like, convoluted. Let's move on. I have one more story I want us to read. I. Do you, do you wait. need a, do you need a break or anything? I think I'm Okay. Okay. I, I, this, this next one we're going to read is like a conversation we're having. So this one caught my eye because it has a very interesting title with a very interesting name and it almost sound Clive Barker-esque when you look at it and when you read it because it's called Zobelius the Ravisher. <laughs> yeah, I just got to it. What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> Zobelius the Ravisher. Like, Hi. I don't know, it sounds like a barbarian, it sounds like a third dimension alien that, that has destroyed many a world. You know, it's like Thanos. Alright. At the same time, it could be some someone's character in World of Warcraft. I'm down. I want to know what Zobelius is about. <laughs> Is he a wizard? Is he an alien? He was my Who hope knows? for so he's the hope for my story right now is because um I I know I'm not going to bring Maggie or Olive into the 200 campaign and I'm not going to say anything about Mr. Stringy but I was hoping that this title would provide me with some good material to bring into the 200 special. Um, I am excited. I want to meet Zobelius very badly. <laughs> Zobelius, I've got a the really, Ravisher. I've got a really good feeling about this. <laughs> All right. Zobelius, the Ravisher, stories to read alone at night. This is going to be the last one we're reading this one. So hunker down for just a little bit longer. Good God, you scared me. I muttered, looking up from my docket to see a sheepish young man sat across from my desk. A terrible first impression, to be sure, but as of late, the workload had begun to interfere with my nerves. And not a moment later, the pneumatic tube whirled and deposited this file with a pronounced and sudden thud that caused us both to temporarily jump in our seats. If you'd give me just a minute, I said, taking a moment to review his files. 
let's see here. It says your name is Walter Flaherty. Yeah, that's me. Good. 35 years old. Cause of death is suicide. Interesting. I wouldn't have taken you for a mortal sin kind of guy, but the paperwork appears to be in order. Now, there's just some routine paperwork. The A9, CT8... And because suicide is technically classified as an eternal refutation of God's holy and unwavering mercy, the uh, DM-45 and attached addendum, uh, it's all standard boilerplate. Just need your initials in the areas highlighted in pink and a signature in the boxes highlighted yellow. I have my insurance card here. He said, reaching for his wallet. It's an HMO, but they should be able to sort everything out. Has my wife come? Your wife? Uh, I certainly hope not. Uh, this <laughs> wasn't a murder-suicide, was it? If so, oh, I'll also need you to fill out your DM-45A as well as your DM-45B if your wife is consented to the murder. Technically, that would also be considered a suicide, but you can append DM-45C if you believe there were exonerating factors. Naturally, that would be for her exoneration and not yours, unless you were the victim of unwitting uh, accomplice. My wife's dead? He said in disbelief. <laughs> what? How would I know that? But you just said... I didn't say that. Nothing of the sort. Releasing that kind of information would be seen as a major violation of protocol. They like to keep the residents in the dark about the outside world. They think it adds to the uh, misery. No, sir. They'd bust my chops real good for a violation like that. So you're saying that you didn't kill your wife? Of course. I'd never do anything to hurt her. Really? I said, raising an eyebrow. <laughs> I have strong Slavic eyebrows and learned long ago that they can be used to great effect when needed. <laughs> yes. Now I am leaving. He said, rising to his feet. Eh, suit yourself. I answered. You can show yourself to the door. Walter made a dramatic turn to find himself face to face with a wall. It was a drab wall with a gray and whitewash finish. If you look at it long enough, you could start to make out pictures like a cloud gazing. It's a mural to the star of the mind. Where's the door? I demand to be let out. Walter, I think the time for making demands has long since passed. Why don't you take a breath and have a seat? I said, briefly waving to the chair. I uh, must apologize, but you caught me off guard. Now, why don't we start over? Uh, your name is Walter Flaherty, age 35. Walter, it's good to meet you. My name is Zobelius the Ravisher, and I am Shit. your intake coordinator. <laughs> Walter shifted uncomfortably in his seat. Oh, relax, I'm not here to ravish you. No, I haven't ravished anyone in years. <laughs> this I, is the best story we've ever read. <laughs> though I can see how you could get that impression because I am large and more than capable, and I've been told that my eyebrows betray a hungry desire. Uh, come to think of it, you hear ravisher and intake coordinator in the same sentence. Well, there's a joke in there somewhere. I let out a hearty laugh in hope that it would break the ice, but Walter's worried stare told me that it was for <laughs> naught. But seriously, I'm just here to help you with your intake paperwork. You look confused, I said with subdued eyebrows. This isn't the hospital? Walter asked with a sincerity that was almost touching. Hospital? No, quite the opposite, actually. Then where am I? You really don't know. Walter shook his head. At 10.17 a.m. local time, that's your time, not our time, you took a 9mm pistol and blew a hole through your temple. <laughs> Walter, you're in hell. There must be some mistake. Not a second later, he buried his head in his hands and began to uh, sob violently. Oh, oh. Walter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we are. I said, extending a tissue with as much comfort as I could muster. During sensitivity training, they told us the best way to ensure a successful transition for new descendants was with a firm but gentle hand. State the facts, but no need to sling insults. It seemed to work well enough that I found that a well-timed joke also went a long way to building rapport. Uh, plus, it gave my work a personal touch. Now, if you're quite done, there is a matter of completing the DM-45. Walter, I have a full docket today, so your co cooperation would uh, really help me out. 
This can't be hell. I lived a good life. First, like I said earlier, suicide is a mortal sin. Second, this isn't actually hell. This is ante room 5488 to the seventh circle. The door is just behind me here. Walter peered over my shoulder. I wouldn't focus too much on that. It only opens from the outside. But if you're uh, not convinced, I can patch it through on intercom. Walter shook his head, but then his curiosity got the better of him. Maybe just for a quick second? Just to test the waters? Suit yourself. I pushed the button on the intercom. The room was flooded with the cries of millions of lost souls all screaming out in a symphony of unspeaking agony. And not a second later, I released my finger and the room fell silent, even quieter than before. Walter's eyes widened in horror. Convinced? Or would you like me to turn it on again? But I lived a good life. I never hurt anyone. I have a wife and a daughter. She's only five. She adores me. Ah, that's the worst part of the job. The pleading. That's why I always state my title up front. Intake coordinator. Assistant intake coordinator, if we're being specific. I don't even have permission to turn on the lights, much less issue a pardon. My hands are tied as tautly as the courtesans I ravished in St. Joseph's all that years ago. Or the mayor's wife's. But I dissemble. My dissembling was abruptly interrupted by the all-too-familiar whir of the pneumatic tube and an inevitable thud. I swiveled in my chair to retrieve the contents. This is interesting, I say to Walter, producing a handwritten parchment and an hourglass. It turns out that you are not completely dead yet. Walter perked up at the news. I placed the hourglass on the table and the grains of sand began to run through the neck at an alarming speed. Well, that's not encouraging. (laughs) What's not? (laughs) Uh, The rate at which the sand is moving, I suspect it's not long before you rid yourself of the mortal coil. Might as well get started on the DM-45. But I'm not dead yet. Walter protested. What if some of that information were to change between now and then? Wouldn't we have to do it all over? Walter, I've tried being funny. (laughs) (laughs) I've tried being sympathetic. You can appreciate that, I said with some ire. But you've got to realize I've got a job to do. There's a lifelong politician due here in a matter of hours. And if you knew what he'd been up to, God, the paperwork on that one is going to be a nightmare. I mean, we're not talking garden variety graft and murder here. This guy was into some seriously messed up stuff. You might as well accept that. In a matter of moments, you're going to be declared dead. Then this door behind me will open and you'll join the cacophony of eternal torment. Walter began to sob. Again. Walter. Walter, I said, regretting the tone I had just taken. They had cautioned us against yelling in sensitivity class. Walter, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. It's just that this job really gets to me sometimes. I'm I'm sure you can understand that. I, I bet your job up above was seriously awful. You're probably glad to be rid of it. I, I actually liked my job. Really? I don't hear that much down here. What did you do? I designed and 3D printed prosthetics for at-risk children. It was really fulfilling, actually. <laughs> because I grew up a peasant and spent my entire adult life in conscription fighting barbarian hordes and bearing witness to unspeakable cruelty and hardship. Honestly, if it wasn't for the <clears throat> ravishing, I don't know how I would have survived. Fuck. I blurted it out before catching my breath. I'm sorry, I did it again, didn't I? That was the work stress talking, Walter. And the fact that they removed the dimmer switch to this goddamned incandescent light. Walter jumped <laughs> in his seat. Oh, relax. You can blaspheme all you want down here. Again, I apologize. That's the job talking, not me. In fact, I think you're a good enough guy, but you've got to help me out here. If I get behind on this paperwork, they're going to notice, and I'm at risk of incurring a third strike here. They're awful sticklers for the rules. If I don't get this DM-45 filled out in a timely fashion, I'll face discipline. Ivor the Defiler said one more infraction, and he'd install a second, brighter incandescent lamp. Can you imagine that discomfort? Walter nodded. I'm sorry, I'll try to be more cooperative. I would appreciate that. Now let's see here. Name, check, age, check, religion, blank. Would you care to state a religion? 
that's entirely voluntary, of course. Catholic, born and raised. Were you baptized? Yep. Confirmed? Yep. Still practicing? Yeah, I attended Mass at least twice a week and regularly to see confession. That's interesting. Don't see too many Catholic suicides. Why is that? Weren't you taught that suicide is a one-way ticket to, uh, well, here? Sure. He replied, But but isn't hell just some concept? A separation from God? A state found on Earth? What? No, it's a, it's a place. <laughs> and you're in it. Well, I guess you could say that you're just outside of it. I, I assure you, it's quite real. But there's no lake of fire or anything like that? He asked with mortal optimism. Oh, there is, and it's magnificent. When they add fresh pitch, it burns in hues of pink and lavender. It's heartbreaking in its beauty, like a Los Angeles sunset. I glanced to the hourglass to find that the sand was nearly spent. He'd had less time than expected. Walter, I'm sorry, but we're, we're nearly out of time here. Walter drew his attention to the hourglass with a morbid fascination. But I'm technically still alive. Why am I here? Heartbeat breathing machinations of a broken body it won't be long he sighed heavily his eyes fixed on the few remaining grains just then the pneumatic tube word i swiveled my chair expectantly but nothing as i was saying you may be breathing but you've quite literally lost your mind i bet they'd still be finding bits and pieces from the odd corner of your bedroom months from Cthud! oh for christ's sake i retrieved the contents from the tube to find another hour gas larger this time and an accompanying parchment walter it looks like you've been granted a reprieve of sorts albeit temporary you've been placed on life support someone must have found you oh god alice no surely this must have crossed your mind you did expire yourself in your bedroom someone close to you was bound to have the grisly task of seeing what you had done but no the parchment says some guy called dale found you and heroically performed cpr until the medics could arrive well that's a plus one in his ledger to be sure from the look of this hourglass i'd say our appointment has been extended i placed a new hourglass on the table it was much larger than the previous one and the sand fell at a much lower uh, slower pace i despaired at the thought of how far behind walter's newfound fortune would set me back in my work i could picture the look of wicked glee on ivor's face as he watched the maintenance crew install the new lamp Despite all of his misgivings, you'd never accuse him of not enjoying his work. Now about the DM-45. Just a few more questions, if you don't mind. But if I'm in the hospital, I might survive. I'm not dead yet. No, not technically, but your body's just an empty vessel at this point. A burned-out castle. If I hadn't told you of the recent events, you'd never be the wiser. Why some salacious orderly might be ravishing you as we Jesus. speak, and you have no way of knowing. Is hell really as old-fashioned as you said, fire and all? It's downright Byzantine. Fire, torture, hot irons, it's relentless. And you never really learn to tolerate it. You're a Catholic, this shouldn't surprise you. I just really didn't believe it existed. Well, don't go too hard on yourself for that. Lots of people of faith are surprised to find themselves here. But as Grimoire the Butcher likes to say, there's no postmodernism in hell, only postmodernists. <laughs> Walter slumped in his chair and massaged his temples. It's okay. Nobody really laughs at that joke. But don't tell that to Grimoire if you ever cross his path. He has rage issues. I'm Grimoire. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Now you're getting it. <laughs> Fucking Dale. Fuck. Dale what? Did you know him? He was my business partner. This whole venture was his idea. I'm sorry a loved one had to find you like that. He was fucking my wife. Are you sure? <laughs> I'd had my suspicions, and then I found the text on Alice's phone. There was no doubt they were in love. Even my daughter adores him. Well, did you at least try communicating with Alice about it? I once <laughs> took a class, and they stressed that communication is the foundation of any successful relationship. I tried. I suggested counseling, but things have been on a steady decline for so long, it was a little too late. I'm sorry to hear that. I truly am. I remember I once ravished this Silesian woman. Nothing special, just a typical ravishing. 
for the time, we were marauding, so it was sort of expected that you'd ravish the woman I had just finished when her husband found Jesus. us. And the, the look on his face. He was much older than she was, geriatric almost, but upon seeing us, his face contorted, and I realized at that moment that I had taken something from him that could never be repaid. What did you do? I was in shock. I'd never felt guilt over ravishing before. I tried to stand and to apologize, but my trousers were around my ankles and I immediately fell back onto the ground, giving him ample view of the equipment I had just used to ravish his handsome wife. The whole scene was pathetic. Not my equipment, no. I could ravish like a loose bull in, loose day, in those days, but the sight of a naked man trying to apologize to the husband of the woman he had just ravished. And then... I righted my trousers and was about to stand when my compatriot, Errold, happened upon the scene and put his sword through the man's heart. Errold was a true marauder, always spilling blood the first chance he got. Got us both into a lot of unnecessary trouble. But when your back was to the wall, there was no one you'd rather have by your side. I thought I had a friend like that. Someone who had my back. Well, I wouldn't really consider Errold a friend. He was an unmitigated psychopath, hence all the bloodletting. When he was in camp, you'd always sleep with one eye open and a firm grip on your sword. And then something peculiar happened. The sand in Walter's hourglass began to run faster and faster. It was the sound that first alerted us to something had changed. I thought you said I'd be here for some time. So did I. I turned to the new pneumatic tube, awaiting another parchment, but nothing. Oh, God. What is it? I asked, cautiously raising an eyebrow, just above the bridge of my nose. Alice, after my mother passed, I told her if I ever ended up vegetative like she did, to pull the plug and just do it straight away. It was just too painful for the rest of us who had to watch her waste away like that. You think she obeyed your wishes? She must have. The sand is running even faster now. It's kind of funny, you know, but I'm not really afraid anymore. She made the choice in the end. The choice. He was on to something. In the end, she made it. That's terrific. I wouldn't say that. It's a terrible thing to have to do. Walter, you're a good guy. I get that. But you're not very smart. This could be viewed as exculpatory evidence if you were to file an EC-66. What's that? It accompanies the DM-45. It's an appeal of sorts. But since Alice made the final decision, your death may not technically be a suicide. So I get to leave? No, of course not. Nobody ever leaves here. But it could help <laughs> your case. Look, I never do this. But you have evidence that you were a good man, right? You went to Mass. You were a family man. Uh, were you faithful in your marriage? Always. And in the end, she was the one who drove you to suicide and ultimately made the decision to kill you. Is why you might still technically be alive right now if it wasn't for her. Despite my good news, Walter's mood remained intractable. But if I don't get to leave, why would I implicate someone else? I mean, it's not like it'll change my fate, right? You won't get to leave, but you might qualify for light duty due to extenuating circumstances. That's what I'm doing, you see. I marauded, sure, and I ravished, to my heart's content. But despite all the battles and ransacking, I never once spilled a drop of blood. My heart was never in it. That was my saving grace, and it's why I'm talking to you and not strung up on the rack out there with a the blazing hot iron being pressed into my genitals. They burned genitals? You heard the chorus of agony. <clears throat> and if I agree, I get to sit in an office like you? For the rest of eternity. But it isn't so bad. They let us send messages through the pneumatic tubes. On my free time when I get any, I like to draw erotic illustrations commemorating my many ravishings. I've been told that they're truly something to behold. I could send some your way if you're interested. <laughs> but I don't want to implicate Alice. Alice's ledger is her own. And Dale? He did save you, so there's a plus one for him there. But then again... He seduced a married woman and betrayed a friend. I really couldn't say, but I could feature his name prominently in an EC-66. Might even make for an easier time for Alice. You could do that? How, how does Dale the Dickless sound? 
But how can you call a man dickless when he was obviously screwing another man's wife? Grimmer the Butcher owes me a favor. I'm sure it could be arranged. Fucking Christ, you do that for me? That's the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That was great. <laughs> that was, that was, it was interesting to see a side of humor out of out of him for once. Yeah, I actually, like, I really enjoyed that. I thought that was really fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there was, like, five gunshots outside my house. Oh, shit. It's okay. I'm fine. Everyone's fine, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I thought it was my boyfriend's video game. And then my roommate just messaged me and was like, did you hear all those gunshots? And I was like, what? Oh, f- <laughs> uh, I love living in a city. <laughs> <laughs> so back to speaking of back to death. So Billy is the ravisher. So Billy is the ravisher. This is that would be a hilarious person to have come into the two hundredth episode. <laughs> <laughs> but he's definitely a character. He's fucking funny. He's a character. I I, I, I feel like in in my head, I really wanted someone like like the Rock, like Dwayne Johnson. To, right. to to do the voice of Zabelius. <laughs> it's like just like someone who's like hardy and 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 manly. I'm hearing like like do you did you ever did you watch uh, what we do in the shadows? Of course. I'm hearing an accent kind of uh like Vlasidius. What was he called? He was Vlasidius the Impaler <laughs> or the Poker. Oh, the Poker. The Poker. Yes, yeah, they Vlad called the me the Poker. Yeah, that's that's how this I picture this man. Completely, J- Jermaine <laughs> Clement. He has a very he has a very boastful voice. Yes, you see, when I was on the land, I ravished all the women. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I feel that. I never spilled a drop of blood. My heart wasn't in it. <laughs> yes, my. Yes, that is when I met the beast. <laughs> yes. It's my ex girlfriend. <laughs> Uh, did you watch the show? I love the show. I loved the show. Oh my god, Nadia, my fave. I was gonna say <laughs> Matt Berry, who is her her boy in that show. Um, La- yes, Laszlo. Laszlo, that's what it is, not Ivan. I'm thinking of someone else, a different vampire. Laszlo is her husband, and he is he's one of my favorite British actors. Um, he was fucking hol- they were all so good the, the show is a different caliber than the movie is the 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 movie is funny in one way and the show is funnier in a different way um the characters yes. the characters bring their own thing to it highly recommend totally what we do in the shadows same side note movie and show can't recommend it enough Absolutely. fucking funny <laughs> oh well this this was a this was an episode we yes. we had some ups we, we had some downs it was a bit of a wild ride, huh? <laughs> Just a little. A That's little what happens when you read stories to to read alone at night. You never know. You never know where <laughs> no. you're gonna end up. You never know what you're going to get. And and that's the good news for next time. You know, um, it's probably not going to be the first thing we immediately get to. But um, I I am, you know, we, we are going to read the rest of them at some point. I do believe there are right. f- four more stories that I found. So we will get yeah. there at some point. We, we are not dried out of the stories to read alone uh, at night just yet. Perfect. I enjoy these. I, li- I actually like having the different, like, you know, completely different changes in pace and everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, that, I, was, uh, that was a very fun change of pace for episode. Like, almost, I, almost yeah. each of them, each of them brought a different flavor. Right. I loved it. I thought it was cool. I think this one was actually my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I love when people say that because, you know, I would hate for it to be the other way around. <laughs> you know, this, yeah, one, this was actually, you know, this one was least. actually the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm never going to recover from the psychological trauma of this. Thanks. We've been doing this. <laughs> we've been doing this for four years. You can't, Jesus. you can't say that. <laughs> you can't say that. Like, you don't enjoy what we're doing. Even, even going back to your first episode where we read stories to read alone at night episode, I think 25. Fuck yeah. You know, 
go go back yeah. all, all the way and and we we started with this material and we're still we're still reading this material a whole I was about to say and later. there's still and there's still material like, <laughs> <laughs> I love it damn I That's think good. that was a great way to, a great note to finish <laughs> absolutely do you have any any closing any closing message you want to send to our fans uh do back stretches when you're young I'm, and... I'm learning that too i'm learning yes <laughs> i, I definitely, definitely should have done that yes me too um obviously don't commit suicide apparently um <laughs> unless apparently. you can blame it on your wife after the fact true that's a that's a and... dm that's a d d uh, dm four five yes exactly and a bunch of other shit <laughs> and yeah i oh and if your kid leaks throw it out throw it out throw it away yeah just throw it away get rid of your kid <laughs> Wherever just it throw is, it away. get rid of it. <laughs> just throw it away. It'll save you a lot of heartache. As always, I'm going to give a shout out to the YouTube. We have some Let's Plays up there. Me and my friends uh, running away, getting killed by ghosts. It's a fun watch. It's a short watch. I keep all my videos around uh, the 40 minute mark. Um, Perfect. Give, give that a look if you have not. I've had different people on almost every episode, just like the podcast. So always tune in, check out what the YouTube is doing because it's doing something different than what we're doing here on the SoundCloud or the Spotify, however it is you're listening to us. Uh, iTunes, Google Play Podcasts. We're we're in a lot of places. So however you're listening to us, uh, go over to the YouTube, give us a watch, give us a listen. Um, and be on the lookout for the 200 special that's coming up real soon. Uh, Cannibal Siren will be back for that. I'll be and, back. Um, we also plan on, uh, oh, I plan on doing something different for that one for the podcast versus the YouTube. So if you want to see some vis- visualization of what we're doing, <laughs> um, you can check out the YouTube um, because I'm going to I'm going to bring a little bit more. To, to that video as opposed to all the rest uh, that we do here on the podcast. It's still going to be posted everywhere podcast wise in case you just want to listen to our gameplay and how we tell our story uh, that episode. Um, but a crossover I, will have, episode. I will have physical media representation uh, for, for the, um, for the YouTube. So uh, if you're not over there right now with that subscribe uh, button already clicked get over there because you'll be seeing the 200th being posted sometime soon uh, and you don't want to miss that do you no way All and right. if you do miss it then Zobilius the Ravisher is going to show up at your house <laughs> he and will find ravish you. you he will yes. bring Mr. Stringy and he will do something with Mr. Stringy you do not like which, the is, likes. which is fuck your wife <laughs> which, oh my god the worst crossover in the world <laughs> And oh, alternatively, <laughs> oh no, oh uh, no! I went somewhere bad. Gross. With it. I went, <laughs> cancel this podcast. Boo! <laughs> I wait till the days end when the moon is high and the light is the tide with the lust for life out. I'm messing with me, I won't run into more, and then we'll look across the land until we stand at the shore. I wait till days end when the moon is high and the light is the tide with the lust for life out. I'm messing with me, I won't run into more, and then we'll look across the land until we stand at the shore.